Don't even start it, KBD. KEB. KEB. See ya. Uh, e. KBD. F. R. Z. All right, I'm coming, Funky. I'm trying to get the code, baby. I know I'm running late, baby. That's all right. F R Z B F N. All right, hopefully that's the right code. Shit, I ain't look at it twice, y'all. Listen, so we're going to start out. I'm going to bring Funky Dalivia in for the prayer. we about to pray. What's going on, player? What's going on, baby girl? How you feeling? We're going to pray. It's 12 o'clock, okay? Every morning we okay. pray. Bye, yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for everything you've done and everything you will do, Lord. We know that your heavenly angels are all around us, protecting us, Lord. We know that you are in control, Lord, and this thing is gone. It's going to go, and we know that this is going to end with a good note. Bless our finances, Lord. Watch over our children, Lord, and our loved ones. Keep us all healthy, happy, content in every way possible. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 What's going on? Nothing up and about trying to make my money during this quarantine, trying to make it do what it do, honey. I know that's right. Listen, I will learn. I learned how to make a coin thanks to you. You know, I got a couple of dollars. You got a couple of dollars with the YouTube? The YouTube, I don't even know how to get to it, but that's okay. We're going to get it. It's in there. They ain't going to they ain't gonna send it to nobody. As long as it's in there, it's protected. They're going to keep it for me. They're, they'll hold it for you. Let me see. So today we got um, Shay Johnson. I'm sending mm -hmm. a link. I'm sending a link to her. Go I ahead. Know. Why, why I fix me some Coca Cola? Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. I don't know where her phone number is. <laughs> so, yeah. If you have any questions today? Listen, we're gonna have a good time today. We're actually promoting Married to Medicine LA, right? We got the beautiful ladies. I've already had on Dr. Um, Brenton, Dr. Imani. I've had on uh uh. Um, Shanique Drummond. I got Jasmine coming tomorrow, right? And then the new girls, I'm going to say for next week because I know y'all getting to know them, right? So Kenya, Dr. Kenya, the Kendra, don't get me wrong, Dr. Kendra, and um, Leah, we got them coming next week, okay? So y'all going to get to know them. We're going to get all in their business and in their life and not in man, okay? So let's talk about the LA girls really quickly. Okay. Um, what's your overall take for me i i watched the last season i watched maybe like the first half and then somehow or another i just kind of lost interest i didn't finish the season the people say i talk too loud so i'm gonna back up from the screen a little bit but you see oh. the first four episodes let me tell you the first two episodes we was in them right we came to la mm -hmm. right i came back the second episode right then mm -hmm. they talked about us the next two episodes Okay. They only had eight episodes. Okay, so maybe that's the, maybe that's where I fell off at. I mean, which was a smart marketing tactic from Bravo's perspective to help you guys incubate their show and transfer the following over or whatever the case may be. You know, I always find the issue with when you start shows on the East Coast, then you do like a West Coast spinoff, especially with people of color. California black people and East Coast black people is two different kinds of black people. And I find sometimes that I just don't really gel well with them California black people. And I know this may sound ignorant to some people out there, but it's just a personality type that I just don't, I don't really get California folks. And, and if you, you from California and you black and you and I are able to forge a friendship, you are a special bitch. And it's not that I dislike them, it's just that their their energy is just different. That's all. Well, you know, I I like all of them, but I'm gonna tell you, when we first came, they were acting like we were just not good enough. You know what I'm saying? Like we were right. ragging, and we're LA, and we're gonna be something different. We're gonna put something different out in the atmosphere. Heavenly, y'all do Atlanta, Atlanta ghetto. You know they say these words, but this is what I got out the conversation. Y'all ratchet. We doctors. We're not gonna be ratchet like that, right? So uh -huh. my thing is like if you don't bring the drama this is one thing that that's why they always say the production says heavenly gets it right mm -hmm. heavenly, you cannot sit up on somebody's show and not have humor 
Right. Crying. Mm -hmm. Conflict. Mm -hmm. Anger. You need all of those. They call them emotions. You got to have some kind of emotion on every damn mm -hmm. scene. You got to give them something or you're going to be boring. The people I, are the big wave society. They want something every two minutes. I think what I'd be looking for, too, is more I, 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 I'd be looking for a sense of realness and relatability and not all that plastic, meaning plastic in your bodies and plastic in your life. All the fluff, the cars, the clothes, the fabulosity, all of that is great. But, you know, I'm, I'm a bit more cerebral. After you pull off these 22 inches of weave and these spider eyelashes and it's two pounds of plaster, a.k.a. you call makeup on your face. Oh, what God. is there? Give me some, give me some real stuff or whatever. But I, I'm gonna give them a second chance. I will say my favorite. Uh, I had two favorite. Contessa's friend, Dr. Britton. I liked her a lot, and I liked Dr. Imani a lot. I liked her a lot because she was no nonsense. She said it how she meant it. Um, the Shanique, you know, Shanique and the other girl, Jasmine. They came off a little plastic to me. Um, very just superficial and it was kind of hard for me to get into that but I, i'm i'm definitely willing to give them a second go round. and i think you should I think that they mm -hmm. got it this time because like the first time we came there to be perfectly honest and i ain't telling too much but behind the scenes they act like they were scared and you know i proud of a, a scary bitch you know what i mean i right. proud so they act like they didn't want to show anything they didn't want to do anything they wanted to be better than us and then if you ask them they'll say the baby doll scene was the best scene and it was the best. And I'm like, people don't care about no damn baby doll. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know. But I thought it was interesting, but it wasn't uh -huh. enough to hold the people's attention. But I'm going to tell you, this season, they got it. Because when they I, got it. When I walked in, they was they, ready they for that, gotcha. me. Tell it, I got red for filth. I got red on down. And That's I, what I heard. No, 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 I did. I almost got my ass whipped. Okay. <laughs> okay. He ain't lying. I almost okay. I walked in there thinking I was gonna fuck mess with them girls. And the new girl, she from South Central or some damn well. And I uh -huh. had <laughs> I thought it was gonna be like the old married to medicine. Your medicine right. right. So, so the, she, she didn't do you like Jocelyn did Toya, did she? Oh no, no, <laughs> Jocelyn was gone. Oh, I was scared. But toy, toy them left. They own damn show. That girl took wow. over. I ain't even lying. But uh, honestly, Dr. Kendra, I'm talking about Dr. Kendra, uh -huh. beautiful woman, beautiful soul. You know, after you read me real good, I like you. You know what I'm saying? Right. You ain't right. this shit no more. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Right. So, right. woman, her husband is a physician. She's an OB doc. And honestly, I'm going to tell you, she's one of my favorites. And I think you're going to really like her. Okay, okay. That's what's up. I'm going to bring them on my live, but I didn't bring them before the show because they don't know who they are yet. Right, so right, right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring both her and there's another girl named Leah. Leah's okay. real cool. She actually owns um, beauty supply stores. Okay, which is big. I'm assuming she's black. Absolutely. Well, okay. Yes. Well, that, that is huge, especially in the in the in the African American female market where the Asians dominate the beauty supply scene. We've been pushing. There's been this push for more Black entrepreneurship in that industry. So that that that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it it's a mess, and I'm walking right into it. I'm not giving you the details. Right, 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 right. I, I, you know what? I almost feel like I need to apologize right now. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. And I tell you, you said Asian. I ain't saying that the Asian. I'm saying that I didn't know all this shit was about to go down in the with the COVID, with the uh -huh. Asian people treating the black people any kind of way over there. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I didn't know all that was going to go down. So now it seems like it's going to be might be more than what it was. Was so I'm assuming you misspoke as usual. <laughs> <laughs> I just made up. Uh huh. Well, I, well, let me hush. Let me hush. Okay. I, I well, said what everybody you. was thinking, but uh -huh. anyway, okay. my mouth, my mouth be getting me in trouble. Mm -hmm. I apologize, but no, she's a real beautiful woman, and okay. um, Mia is real cool. She actually looks like Nini. Okay, awesome. Then with a presence, like she real, like they coming with it this season. Okay, I love it. I can't wait. I yeah. can't wait. Do you no. think? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, you got it. I was going to say, do you think it is uh, 
any easier out there for them to find cast members than it is for y'all in Atlanta? I don't know. You know, I think that uh, it's probably, I would say it's harder to find. Like, okay, so Toya said it was easy to find doctors and doctor's wives. I don't think it is. I think that, okay, you might can find wives. You know what I mean? But then the question is, will their husbands let them do it? Exactly. You know why? Because so many people got so much shit going on in their life. They cheating. A lot of them do drugs. A lot of them, you know what I'm saying, have a lot going on and they don't want this exposure. Mm -hmm. So it ain't that easy. It might be easy for Toy to go out to the grocery store, meet people and say, hey, you know what? You want to be a part of this. But when you bring it back to the doctor. Right. People don't right. have a clean, clean. Yeah. Well, then I, think, I think too above that heavily is what will my friends think? You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what will my circles think? You know, people are conditioned to believe that doctors and attorneys were in these elite circles. We, they are in these elite circles. What will my friends think? I think that's a large part of it, too, that people don't want to be associated with reality TV, per se. I think people like Mar the Married to Medicine franchise is helping to break down that stigma as you and Jackie and others are able to show this can be lucrative. You can be a doctor and a media personality as well. But I think a lot of people are hung up on the social stigma of it all. But not only that, like I can find a friend that's a doctor that would like to be a friend of the show and come on, but they don't right. want to tell a real shit. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to be past that they actually have to put their stuff out there. Cause right, right. y'all don't expose people for being gay. Y'all don't expose <laughs> them for doing drugs. Y'all don't throw too many cheaters. And people look at this shit like. Would you go to a doctor that cheat on their wife? Would, would like it, it, would, would that would that affect your decision to submit your insurance stuff and go to that person or or well, would I would have to heed to what my husband thinks. He thinks that's attack on character. He says that's okay. a character flaw. That's just like looking at somebody credit with some messed up credit. That's uh -huh. your character, who you are, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So he feels that way. I I'm a little bit different because I think that most men cheat. I'm not gonna say all, but I think most of them do. You know, uh -huh. so deter me. I would like to go to an African American female anyway, and I don't know if that's wrong to say, but uh -huh. and I do know that women cheat too. Don't get me wrong, uh -huh. but it's not get caught because we not stupid. So would you go to would you go to a messy OBGYN? Like if you saw her on the show, I'm, I'm trying to get to the bottom of people's fear of being in the profession and doing TV. If she was the messy, you know, the messy bitch that slapped five, and she liked to throw back beers and fool la la. But she's also credentialed and got her shit together. Would you be apprehensive about going to her? I think the difference, and I know what you're saying on our show, is that we have a choice. Yeah. So we have a choice. We have one that throws it back, and then we got one that's very classy, very mm -hmm. astute, astute. Somebody that sees all these celebrities, so you feel like, okay, she, if she can see them, then right. you know, she can see I me. Saw her. And then, but but the difference is, okay, when you bring a dentist. And I don't mm -hmm. know if you look at that differently, but mm -hmm. you really only have one choice of a dentist and you see my work because I'm putting it out there. Unlike other people think it's OK to promote your shit on the show. You mm -hmm. should promote your stuff on the show. Mm -hmm. And if you showed up before and after, you just sold them right there. Mm -hmm. They heat it up, you know, the work. Yeah. So, yeah, the work speaks for itself. I get it. But no, I would not take a OBGYN that throws it back. No, I wouldn't. Okay, I, wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I get it. I get it. And I'm trying to think what I prefer a female. I would prefer a female OBGYN. But you know what I like, Jackie? It's because her voice is so freaking calming. She uh -huh. makes me feel good. Like, Jackie is my friend. I really do consider her my friend. And, like, if I'm going through something and I call her real life, I know she's not going to repeat it. I know mm -hmm. it's going to be a confidential conversation. And she, her voice just make you feel better. She'd be like, mm -hmm. okay, Emily, now let's think about this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. She reminds me of my husband so much. I mean, I ain't gay or nothing, but she remind. If I had to pick a wife, mm -hmm. okay, I love it. But all of them different now, because I tell you, Toya the sexiest. Like if I was just wanted to have sex with somebody, I pick Toya. Uh, okay, okay. If I, if I wanted a friend and a just a, I like Contessa. Uh huh. Contessa cool. She's and she's really smart and she's a go getter. Honestly, and I ain't trying to be Jonan. I couldn't do Simone. She's too fickle, too many personalities, and she's too loud. I wouldn't want to fuss with her. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then the same thing for Quad. I, I, I just couldn't. I feel like it would be me giving it all, and she wouldn't get. I want somebody like Contessa or Jackie. Jackie give 100%. Contessa mm -hmm. is 50 50. 
Who else is that? Toy? I wouldn't do a Toya for real, but just to have sex with her, I do Toya. Okay. Don't buy candy bars. Did I break it down? I don't, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> you broke it down. But I love all the ladies. I know that we got a lot of gifs and stuff going on. Funky, my problem is, this is my problem, and I want you to help me, right? Okay. I want you to help me. I just be joning on these people. I just be playing, right? Yeah. I say what the audience is thinking. But these, they do the same thing to me, I think. Is that working for you? For real. Is, is it working for you considering the, the backlash that you get from the ladies? Because they seem to not be able to take it. It's working for me, yes. In, okay. in a general sense. Right, 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 right. I mean, but if you... In a, in a friendship sense, in a girlfriend sense, is that working for you? It's been painfully obvious that some of these people were not my friends from the beginning. So, because I, I, I'm i an equal opportunity joner, right? Mm -hmm. So I joan on Jackie, I call her skinny ass, bony old ass, I do it. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And Tessa I done said, you know, all kind of stuff about her. Her man should have went to the shouldn't have went to the bathroom with all the cheaters, and maybe he cheating too. And I done said she was gay. All of this stuff, just playing. Y'all know I be kidding. They are okay with it because I guess they're okay with themselves. Right. If I say one thing about Simone, it really I ain't really said too much about Simone because I know she's sensitive. But let me ask you this because I, I read the comments. Of course, I follow the shows. And a lot of people are of the opinion that you are a mean girl doing this shit intentionally and under the veil of humor. What do you say to that? I think that after you watch the live that uh, Cecil and Simone did the other day, you'll see the truth. They come after me when I'm not around. They keep saying shit on Twitter behind my back, all of this, Simone. And then when I bubble up and say the shit, all they can do is see the stuff that happens on TV, but they don't see the fact. I... And I'm trying to be very careful because I said I want to keep the men out of it. I do. I don't take very well man, men saying anything about me. And maybe that's a flaw in me. I'm not used to it. I'm used to men being respectful and staying out of women's stuff. So that angers me. So now I go in Simone harder because I'm not coming at her husband. In a sense that, you know, Damon will say, and I, you, this might sound crazy. If a woman says something to him and he gets mad, he going to hit her husband. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm going after Simone. But really, my target ain't Simone, is it? But I don't want to, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I will say I was on the Married to Medicine uh, Instagram, Married to Medicine Instagram thing last, last night, last night, the night before last. And no, it was. It, darling. They're saying I'm starting. I'm not starting this. Y'all just not seeing the start yeah. of it. I'm retaliating from the shit they started. I was on that um, page and I saw they sp split up a live that Toya and Simone did. And I must say, let me preface, because whenever I talk about Cecil and Simone, I always say Cecil and Simone are my favorite married to medicine couple. They, they have been for a lot of years. It was very off-putting the level of instigation that Cecil was doing on that live, egging Toya up to talk about Qua and Mariah and just being messy. And, and, and I can say it. It came off very faggot, like it just did. It just, I, and, and, and I'm the resident gay boy. I was like, oh, sis, sissy, Cecil is acting like a messy queen, egging Toya on, who looked like she probably had a few cocktails to go in on people. And I'm not, and, and, and it was very passive aggressive on Simone's behalf, in my opinion, because you sitting there in the frame, you not stopping Cecil, and then low key looked like you let Cecil do your dirty work. So when somebody come at you, you can pull this card. Oh, it wasn't me. That was Cecil. That was Cecil. But you didn't attempt to stop him. And much like you and David's position, I much rather would have preferred Cecil to have stayed out of it or for Simone to have been the meats and potatoes and Cecil just be the side order, just chime in. But Cecil was the one driving the conversation. And it was just a little off-putting to me. And you know, I made, I'm gonna say I made the mistake, right? That has not, this is this is nothing new. And I'm being very careful here. This is not new. He been doing this shit on Twitter. He been I retaliate one time. I see it. People people, you know, I, I'm friends with the children. You know that you're right. right. So I understand the children. They're friends. When some stuff go down, they text me and I ain't even looking for it. So when mm -hmm. I see over and over again, you've said some things that are inappropriate about let me be clear, because I'm being careful. My husband 
would never be on Twitter talking about somebody else's wife. He just wouldn't do it. I don't understand the thought process behind that. And I don't understand it. I retaliate one time. I had a cocktail too. Retaliated one time, but yeah, I said about three or four different things. Mm -hmm. They couldn't take it. Mm -hmm. Leave me alone. I don't have no like comebacks. I don't. And that's where the mean girl comes in because I I, I don't know no like shit. Mm -hmm. So like I said, I'd rather be quiet. But my whole mm -hmm. thing is, based on all of that, what you just said, I'm never coming for the husband because I don't want no problems. I know this man back here. I'm coming straight for Simone, and she may not have said it, but it's been said in the household. And don't use no, don't use Lake. Mm -hmm. like Mariah does. Don't use right. Lake, like Mariah does, because I'm not talking to Lake. Lake is not on the cast. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm coming for the person on the cast. You gonna bring up my name? You bringing up quiet name? You bringing up stuff like who got fired? Who got? Who? I don't understand the. And, and you know, I pick stuff in my brain to the T, like. Maybe it's like, let me secure this check for my wife because I know I'm not going back to work, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, that could very well much be possible. I, Daddy, mean, I don't <laughs> think he thinks of this like this. Like I say, Damon don't even know what I make. He don't. Right. That's what I'm used to. I'm not saying nothing bad about nobody's husband. I'm just saying my yeah. husband doesn't know, understand that concept. You know, for me, it was just a little off-putting and a concern of mine is that this coronavirus uh, quarantine has led everyone across all the, the, the reality shows to be doing YouTubes and lives and stuff. And I'm curious to know what these next seasons of multiple reality TV shows are going to look like, considering the fact that so many people have been talking shit on social media now leading into filming so now on our first day of filming and we're at so-and-so's dinner bitch i got an attitude right and that's what i, I got an attitude so i'm just curious to know how all of this is going to play out when now you know, to be very honest with you we all after they did they laugh and i did my response to they laugh we all got a letter from Bravo saying, uh -huh. hey guys, please do not expel anything from season eight. And I'm thinking like, season eight ain't even happened. Uh -huh. But guess what it is? I think that they love it. I think that they look at like ching, ching, ching and they think that they gonna bring the camera sooner than later. But then mm -hmm. you might think that some people are not online so they're not even gonna understand what has transpired. Mm -hmm. And I think after the reunion, we all make up, but now the first season, the first episode, we all pissed. Right. Right, 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 right. I mean, that's that, this is going to be an interesting run this fall. Um, when do y'all think y'all going to start back filming? Have they have they told y'all? I heard that the production team is coming Ju June 8th, but I don't know when. You know what I'm saying? Right. They do th two or three weeks of pre-production and then you start right. filming. So I don't know. I don't think anybody knows anything. I think initially they knew who was fired, but now I think everything's up in the air now. I don't think they know. You know what I'm saying? Right. So... Right. I, I think anybody could be. You could see uh, uh, Jill might be back here. You don't know. You know what I'm saying? You might see J J what's the name? Janice. Janice. I like Janice. I think Janice never got her fair shake. I, I, I really felt like before they let Janice go, Janice should have been given one more season. I, I, I don't know. I think that was Lisa Nicole was on that season. I think maybe, and I don't know this to be fact, I think maybe what Lisa Nicole had going on overshadowed Janice, and Janice couldn't really jump in there like she needed to be but i really did like janice amongst y'all i didn't know what her story was but you know I, I i never did really get to know her i will say that uh -huh. you know I, mean? I like the white girl jill i really liked her i thought that she know, was playing with us and she she was beautiful her husband was a plastic surgeon i think or something and she was tell you, us. when when housewives got rid of kim and then y'all show got rid of Carrie and Jill. Before then, the, the, the thought process was you have to build an ensemble cast and there has to be a white girl on the cast in order for the show to sell. I actually remember even having this conversation with Mariah season one when we were cool. And she's like, you know, you just you just got to have one. And I think that was the general feel. Then Housewives came along and proved we're actually more profitable and more lucrative when it's just an all brown girl show. The issue that I have and my concern with Garcelle Bouvet being over there on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills is that, especially in this racial and political climate, it makes it so easy 
the moment there becomes conflict, that it becomes about race. You know what I'm saying? Then it gets very divisive very quickly. And that's something that we don't need. So I am of this thought process. Now, if it's working with the five, six brown girls, just leave it be the five, six brown girls. Because we must admit, there is a bit of a cultural difference between the way black people and white people uh, live. Um, favor, check your text, because there's some requests. Uh, Shay is coming in, but I there's some requests there. You got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I feel more comfortable. Um, and that's why I stopped uh, reviewing the Housewives of Beverly Hills and the Housewives of, of uh, New York because I didn't know, like, you know, I, I'm a bad person when it comes to sensing what's not appropriate. You know what I'm saying? So I felt like maybe I might say the wrong thing because I was comparing them and I, rightfully so, I was comparing them from black to white. Right, right. What do white women doing and what we doing? And they stuff to me was much worse, but it wasn't considered worse. Right. It became not racist, racial, but racial. Right. Yeah, because that unfortunately it's the only defining difference you know what i'm saying and you know a, a, lar a large part of the issue with me and people always ask why didn't i review the housewives of new york and beverly hills and stuff earlier and i would tell them i said because i can't relate to the things that upset them you know what i'm saying like i can't they be sitting at the table arguing about i saw you at the restaurant and you didn't get up and speak to me and where I come from, that's just called a bitch was busy and on her phone. You know what I'm saying? Or a ballet had to pull the bitch car up and she had to go. I catch you later. I could not get into their drama. Um, and so that's why I was like, sometimes it's great to keep it different because the things that upset us won't necessarily upset them. And you know what, Heavenly, now that I'm fleshing this out in my mind, it may not even be a race thing and it may be a socioeconomic thing. Rich people have rich people problems versus people that grew up with humble beginnings. It take a lot more to get us shaken and stirred and rattled because we like, girl, a bitch didn't speak to you. It's your, your issue. Bitch, I'm worried about the lights being on. You know, what I'm I got real problems, you know, but, so. But but from behind the scenes and, you know, I know all the we're well, not all of them. I know some of the producers and some of them do the same shows with us as them. What I was told is they get away with stuff that we can't like, you know, how if they miss something, like if you walking in and they miss something, they'll have you walk back in, right? To do that, right? To just get that. They don't do that. You either get it or you don't. So it's very difficult for them to tell the story because the I'm going to say the white women, they don't play about repeating something or doing it over. So they got to get it how they get it. And sometimes you can't follow the story because they like, this is real life. This is reality TV. We not go. Right. If you didn't get it, you didn't get it. Right. Oh. As it should be. All right, so we should have Shay Johnson coming in. I'm waiting on her. I don't know. I got a lady named Ebony here. Let's talk to her. Hey, Ebony, you got a question or a comment? Hey, Ebony. You gotta, uh, unmute her, Dr. Ebony. We can't hear her. That's her. Yeah, y'all keep saying that. Hey. Hey, Ebony, we can't hear you. Come back out and come back in. We can't hear you. I don't know what it is. It's probably your phones. Come back in, babe, beautiful. I ain't doing no ebony. I can't see who she looked like. So show me your face. Nikki Miller, how you doing? This one of my regulars. How you doing, Boopy? What's up, Dr. Heavenly? Where was you at Monday? It was trying to get you, man. I was asleep. I had um I had some friends over at my house and I had got drunk Sunday night, so I had to sleep <laughs> in. I, I ain't young like I used to. I had Ooh. to sleep in liquor off. <laughs> Ooh, it was on. It was on. What was it? Yeah, um, yeah, community. Well, why are you here? I'm just saying, block her, whoever that is. I wanted to add to what you were saying about um having um uh, a white woman on the show. You know, yeah. actually, I was glad when uh, like Kim got off of Atlanta Housewives, mm -hmm. only because of the fact that every time we have a black show, we always have to have a token white person. Mm -hmm. So it, it was great to see. That we can have an all black cast and still be successful. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. And to your point, they don't make that concession for us. They right. don't let me build the right. show and then be like, we got to have one slot for a black girl. Well, that's why I love that Garcelle came on. I was yeah. going to mention that. I was going to say, finally, they see, okay, well, maybe we ought to add a black person to bring more black viewers to yeah. that show. And, and it's funny because I wish 
that it was being done from a genuine place. Right. But it really isn't. It's all about the almighty dollar. It's exactly. like, no, we know that black women out there really watching this reality TV and we can steal some of that following over here. That's why they're doing it. They're not. I mean, you know, yeah, we're benefiting from it slightly, but it, it still wasn't born from a genuine place. Exactly. Exactly. And that's exactly what I mean. So I'm 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 actually glad. And I hope they they keep it a black cast, actually. And, I, and you know, I, I see that um, this is going to be probably a good season, Dr. Heavily. It really is because y'all really going tit for tat on here. But it's pretty cool. I like it. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Heavily, the thing about you is, like you said, you you Jones on all of them. And I think uh, Dr. Jackie, she's realized this is just heavenly. You know what I mean? So you kind of like ignore the comments that be said or whatever. Um, also Contessa. And I think that's because of your upbringing. I'm not exactly sure if uh, Simone came from the hood or not. I don't know. Um, but people, you, you, um, people identify with your... Um, your um perception your um demeanor because it's real i mean I, every last one of us got a friend who's like dr heavenly mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? everybody you know so you just know and you accept it and you be like oh she just playing or whatever and keep it moving mm -hmm. but um, this is gonna be a good season it's pretty cool i think that um i don't know i don't know and, and, and you know i'm not gonna say a name but i think that some people are not built for this some people are real fragile and that's why I'm real careful with them. You know what I mean? I try to leave them alone. I try not to bring them up, but they keep fucking with me. Like it, it, it ain't just one time. I'm serious. Not to, you know, she only got all the reason in the world to be mad. I joke on her all the time. She's a lazy read. She's lazy, a lazy read. Easy. Mm -hmm. So it's like anything come up, you can try to throw toy in it, whatever. Mm -hmm. But some of these people so damn timid, I'm actually really afraid of what might happen. Nah, nah. Shay, you a problem they, they still either gonna get thicker or uh, hey, you, have you having a problem getting in? Hey, how are you doing? Yeah. How am I to go? They sent you the link. You just press the link and you come on right on in. I'll send it to you again. Okay, send it to me. Uh -huh, bye bye. But no, you right to your point. Either your skin get thick. Listen. This reality TV stuff ain't new. We, we what we 15, 16 years into reality TV. You got right. to kind of got an idea of what you stepping into, knowing exactly. the kind of scrutiny that you're gonna get. And, and, and I'm sorry for the type of paychecks that that y'all make. Right. To basically go out to eat with one another, like suck it up. They got there's nowhere else in the world you're gonna make that type of money to go have dinner with a bunch of bitches. They better, they better just go to read school and that's just the right. most education. <laughs> I, I had the, the, the luxury of being a child that got picked at. So I learned how to read real early. And I at this age, I would have never thought I would have needed that that skill. The skill. <laughs> you know I mean? And to me, I wouldn't have never used it. But now I'm put in a situation where I say God has ordered your steps. I'm gonna put Jesus in that. She ordered your steps, right? <laughs> but the scary part is uh funky Daniva is because and, and I'm not even trying to be classist or anything, because I made this kind of money before the show. Mm -hmm. And there are people now just making this kind of money, it's really showing their true colors and they're really um trading in their true friends for a paycheck, I believe. You know what I'm saying? They don't have no beef with Jackie. Jackie ain't never did nothing to nobody. Jackie mm -hmm. has not stopped speaking to Simone. Simone stopped speaking to Jackie. So to say that she can't come to her house, that's just malarkey. You trading in your friendship, and that bothers me. Like, that was your friend. Forget me. I met you on the show. Mm -hmm. So that's but, you got, but you got to stay out of them people's shit because last season, you looked like a whole lesbian in Jackie ass, just all <laughs> taking on Jackie. And the people was like, Heavily just all in Jackie. Even now, you sit up here defending Jackie. Leave Jack. Jackie got a whole nine foot tall. Jackie got a whole nine foot tall husband who still got some making up to do for cheating on her. He can defend Jackie. Leave. Jackie can defend herself. Stay out of Jackie ass, Dr. Heavily. <laughs> that Cecil's a man, I mean, not Cecil. Curtis is a man's man. He's not going to get in women's bullshit. You right, but, but you don't need to be it, 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 I, 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 and I'm just keeping it real. Say, say what you want to, 
Jackie's not going to say how it need to be say, said. Well, then, let her, then let her sit there and be read then. Let her sit there and just be read. <laughs> but let, understand that it's my pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't even like she asked me to do it. In fact, she probably tell me to shut but up. Then, but, but then you can't sit here and say you don't understand why that lady don't fuck with you and she keep fucking with you. Okay? You didn't no, no, that's okay. No, no. okay. I'm saying leave Jackie alone. She didn't do it. I did it. Okay. That's all I'm saying. But let you that girl best friend. So much. Thank you so much, Nikki. I'm gonna get straight in. Nice so pleasure meeting you. Nice to meet you too. Bye, Bye. baby. Hi, Dr. Girl, hey, what's up? Girl. How you feeling? I feel, I feel good. What's going on? Yeah. What you do? Hey, Shay. I tried to get fixed up for your interview. I just finished working out, so. Oh, you look good, Chad. Well, I ain't fixed up. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Shay. I, I, you know, most people I bring on here, I know personally, you know what I mean? We've hung out. I, I I know I met you before. Yeah, several times in Atlanta. Yeah, we've taken pictures. But she's trying to make this a job in the group. We have never yeah. like hung out. I can't say that you know you 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 know me as a friend, but we we've definitely been acquainted. You know, mm -hmm. um, I started off with Flavor of Love years ago, and I'm just talking about I guess a couple of the shows I've been on. Um, Flavor of Love. Then I went to um, Charm School. Then I did I Love Money, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, and now. Love and Hip Hop Miami. Um, all of the shows I've been on, been on VH1. It's been a hell of a ride. It hasn't been easy. I've had my ups and downs like anybody else, but I'm here. I'm making it. Um, I have a business, a brand now. I'm into health and wellness. The name of my business is The Healthy Hand. I have fibroid relief pills, tea, detox. Um, I have uh, black sea oil and I, unfortunately, because of coronavirus, it's taken off. I, I, it's like coronavirus is a curse and a blessing at mm -hmm. the same time. But my business is taken off, so I have no complaints mm -hmm. at all. Well, but, you, you look pretty. You know, to be on so many shows, and I, you know, I go by my first, uh, my first opinion. You seem kind of shy. It's almost no. like you're shy. No, I'm not, I'm not shy. Actually. I can't Ain't nothing hear shy about Shay. At all. <laughs> you can't hear me, Dr. Heavenly. I can hear you. Yes. No, can I, you hear I can't hear him at all. If he's saying something to me, there is like muted for some he reason. Said, he said she can't hear you. But you can hear me. I can hear you. Yes. Let me let I me come out and come back in. But I'm gonna go out and come back in and see if that works. Okay, so Shay, what's going on, girl? So you um you've been in all the seasons of 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 uh Love and Hip Hop. Are you new to it? I mean, you've been on well, that long time. I've, I've been on all of the seasons of Love and Hip Hop Miami. I did season one, season two, season three. Um, and it, right at the end of season three, the coronavirus came out and now everything, everything is on hold. So whomever was supposed to film, you know, for New York, Atlanta, I know Atlanta been doing a few things and they've been transitioning and filming from home, which is cool. But I know LA is on hold right now. I got that phone call from a cast member. They're, they're, not, they're not filming until indefinitely until whenever this is over so they you, usually start in may and then they pushed it to june i'm talking about la love and hip-hop la now they said we don't know when we're going to start filming so we don't know what's going to happen with the franchise shay can you hear me now yes yes I okay can. so you're on miami are you on la as well or just miami no i'm just on miami i started in atlanta and i did season one and two in atlanta and then i switched and came down to miami I was paid more money. I became a main character. So I went where the money was. And right. I was able to upgrade myself. I love Trina. Trina can do no wrong for me. I love her. That's because, because she's like, her and Trick Daddy are like, you know, I came up in that age where they just yeah. they've been in the game so long. Like it's so much just respect for them. And based on what they've done for the community, what they've been doing. I mean, I don't know what drama is. That might be your, your rival in the show. I don't know. No, no, no. I, I don't. I've never had any um, drama with Trina. I've known Trina since Flavor of Love. We have a mutual friend, Brian McKinney. That's who introduced us. And I'm not saying like that's my ride or die friend, but we've never had any issues. We've hung out several times. Definitely acquainted. You know what I mean? I support her. I support her music. There's no bad blood. And I love Trick Daddy. Trick Daddy. I mean, I feel like honestly, I feel like I know them, but I don't. 
Cause they so Miami. It's that Miami. It's that Miami blood. Miami, like, 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 you think about the uh, the dry bitch face. Like, you just be going up to people, kind of, you know, you don't see this yeah. right away, and it takes time to get to know them. But I understand that kind of person. They, that's they, they are t they are king and queen of Miami to me. You know what I mean? Trick daddy, they from the bottom. I don't think Love and Hip Hop Miami could have started without them. It wouldn't have made sense to start right. Love and Hip Hop Miami without them because they represent the, the hip hop of Miami. So, and they, they've had so many different records. They're highly known here. They set a tone here. They have a radio station. I mean, a, a radio show now. So without them, it, I just don't think it would have happened. So well, shout out to both of them. I don't have let no- Let me ask you a question about Love and Hip Hop Miami, right? Obviously, are you, are you living in Miami now? Yes, I've been here two years now. Okay, same here. I'm, I'm back down here to me to connect. But anyway, being a Miami local and resident, the first two seasons of Love and Hip Hop Miami, I just didn't like them for whatever reason. I think like, I, I don't know why when reality TV shows come to Miami, and I mean no shade to my Latin brothers and sisters, I think automatically they feel like they have to skew Latin, right? And we looked at like the Real Housewives of Miami, they tried to skew Latin, that shit just didn't work. They tried to revamp them, it just didn't work. The first two seasons of Love and Hip Hop Miami, they, they you know had multiple characters, you know, of different races all over the place. It looks like season three, they kind of got the memo and said, no, nah, we need to keep this shit tried and true to Miami hip hop, AKA to black folks. And it seems to be working like, What's your opinion um, on that? I think what happened was the a lot of people don't know there was a transition with the production company. Right now we're with Big Fish. And the way that they film and their focal point on the, and the direction they are going in is completely different from season one and two because it's a completely different production company. Gotcha. Um, you have to also understand in Miami, um, the, the, culture, the Spanish culture is heavy here. So if, if you're talking about Miami, you want to represent all cultures. You just didn't want to stereotype just with our culture of the african-american community because mm -hmm. you have african-americans here haitians here spanish mm -hmm. here like it's it's multi-cultured and i think they wanted to show the diversity um i like season one season two i like the money i was paid but i definitely see what you're saying with the difference with season mm -hmm. one and two versus season three season three was a little more hood um but you, that's what you have in miami a lot right. of people go to miami <laughs> beach and think that's what miami is about no you have to leave the beach and see it's going down here you know what I mean? Like, I'm glad you get it. No, so you're here. Yeah. So if you're a tourist, leave the beach. If you want to see Miami, see all of Miami. Right. You know, go to the clubs, the restaurants, yeah. and go to the hood. It's very right. different outside of Miami Beach. I've always told people, just being from Miami, the Miami Tourist Bureau, the government, whomever, have done a very good marketing job of marketing Miami as palm trees, blue water, and Latin flair. But those of us like Dr. Heavenly who are from Miami, honestly and truthfully, if you are truly from Miami, you don't even know shit about no beach. You know what I'm saying? Because we stay so far inland. You know what I'm saying? We know about the Rolex. We know about Tuckers. We know about Tootsies. We know swap about shop, stuff like that. Swap shop. What's good? You know, you, you swap. Where's the bar? At the, you know, the Overlock and Hialeah flea market. We know about shit now. like that. Um, this, this whole beach situation is new for a lot of us. And quite frankly, growing up here, a lot of us couldn't afford to live here. Now, I will say this. When I left Miami and went to Atlanta, I'm not going to lie, I laughed at bitches in Atlanta who thought they was doing it when they came to luxury. They also, thought they were doing it. I'm like, bitch, I am from Miami where these Cuban hoes be at Publix and Bentleys for no reason. It just be like, mama, why are you so dressed? Why you got on $20,000 diamonds going shopping? Like, yep. Do you see this foreign money down here in Miami? It I laugh at Atlanta. And don't get me wrong, I love to see my people doing well. Right. But if y'all ain't doing shit, y'all ain't doing shit. It's a whole nother level here. It's a whole <laughs> nother level. My family of Miami is Carroll City, New Orleans. I yes. was gonna go back to Miami because that's my memory. Now had I grown up on the beach, I might have a bit different view. But if everybody would ever asked me, are you ever going back to Miami? Uh uh. Cause you <laughs> in Atlanta. Atlanta, you can't get the shit here. You know what I mean? The things that we have here in Miami, that's just almost like LA or New York. Miami is high. So to your point, and you and I grew up in the same area, Carroll City. When I left Carroll City for Atlanta, I said to myself, I would never 
move back to Miami, ever get me the fuck out this ghetto shit. I can't stand being around you niggas. I want to go around some progressive black folks that's doing shit. But I'm going to tell you what makes my experience in Miami now different. The fact that I don't live in Carroll City and the fact that I now make the type of money required to live the Miami that you see on the tourist brochures. Absolutely. You see what I'm saying? Like I the brickles, the aventura, exactly. the styles, like right. the areas right. where you can live good and feel right. good and you around. Right. I'm around nothing but you know, money. I'm in aventura. You know, a bitch love I love to show off my accomplishments, honey. When I step outside my door, oh he got it. <laughs> <what I'm doing. laughs> bitch, right I'm, 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 bitch, I'm in the penthouse unit up top, you honey. You see what I'm saying? Ain't nothing but boats and marinas up under me. That's different than how we grew up. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So now that I can live the tourist brochure of Miami and I can walk downstairs and get on a boat or a jet ski right now, bitch, that's the life. It is. But, but, but I had to go to Atlanta to build that foundation. I could have never gotten my career started here. I mean, you got to think about it. In that, put, put it like this. In my apartment that I'm staying in, I'm, I'm right on the water too, baby. Don't get it twisted. But where okay. I'm staying at, do you know I pay the same amount here that I was paying for my five-bedroom house in Atlanta, Georgia? Yeah. I had a five-bedroom house in Atlanta, Georgia, and it's the same price. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, wow, you really better come up, come with, come up with the coins if you come into Miami. You want to? You have to. I, I, I don't know. I just got a bad taste of Miami that I don't ever want to go back. To. I just, yeah. you know, but the first taste that I really saw Miami was when I came back for a dental convention. Because you know, little kids from Miami, we never saw all of that. Right. Like, oh wow, we stayed in a nice hotel. I was like, well, shit, I ain't know this part of my like you can right. go to some of them restaurants that's on the beach, like on and they got them big, beautiful cars. And I be in my mind, and I know this is a poor way to think. I used to see so many nice cars. I was like, well, what the hell they do? <laughs> get money. They, they get don't. real money out here. They get money. But to your point, Dr. Heavenly, I was embarrassed to tell when I moved back, I was embarrassed about how much I did not even know about the very city I was born and raised in because it is a class system here. If you black and your parents make this much money, you stay in this area. That's we true. didn't ever come over on no beach. We didn't have no business over here. We couldn't afford shit over here. We couldn't yeah, afford shit over here. You know here. what? You know what I would say? A lot of people I meet here don't go to the beach. No. People like me, I go all the time because I wasn't born here. I wasn't raised here. You know, I, I wasn't really surrounded around water. I was born in Hawaii. We were there, I was there eight years, but I was a youngin. You know, I didn't know really, I don't even half ass remember it. But mm -hmm. coming here, like I could go, like he said, I could go to the beach. I can go eat and look at the bay and watch these mm -hmm. big old folks, you know, go mm -hmm. past. You know, like, $500 to do it's it though. Of mine for mm -hmm. me. I don't know, it's a piece mm -hmm. of mine. I love it, it's beautiful. And it's, it's weird, and, and I know the people probably getting bored with our beach talking, we gonna get off of it. I always tell people, Miami, between Miami, Hollywood, and Fort Lauderdale, you're talking like 30 miles, 30, 40 miles of coastline. Every five feet is a condo building with 600 units in each building. Each unit started at over $500,000 a year. There's a lot of fucking money here. There's a lot. There is a lot, a lot, a lot of money here. And when you look at the Brickles, the beach, the downtown now even, and then you hear the words recession, you like recession where? Like what? <laughs> You like recession where and, and you know it, it's it's everybody ain't in no recession because these right. folks make a good goddamn money and it's young people if you go to brickle right now stock to heaven it's millennials crossing the streets and they uber scooters going to their nice ass apartments and it ain't all sports and entertainment money too it, it's money out there to be gotten wait not only that i noticed it's a lot more people that are into fitness and health here I swear, yeah. coming out my door, everybody is walking, running, yep. working out, jogging. The, if you mm -hmm. go to the park, they have a session set up, an area set up for you to go work out. Where mm -hmm. you can do push ups, pull ups, like mm -hmm. literally at the park. It's like mm -hmm. a gym, an outside gym at the park. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. My thing in Miami is I, I still, I'm still on how they making the money because if you go to the mall, everybody in the mall, like, like this the middle of the week. Where y'all work at? Like, what y'all doing to get this money? They set their own hours here, Dr. Heaven. Yeah. Huh? They set their own hours here. Okay. Yes, it's, 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 it's all day. I right? set my own hours too, but I ain't in the mall on a Tuesday. I think it's a lot of foreign money here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of tech money here. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of old cocaine cowboy money that got converted into entrepreneurship money here. Um, 
And then two, you got to understand, we've got a great, we've got a large immigrant population and immigrants don't know nothing about filling out no job application All and getting a career job. They know about starting businesses. All they know is, I know how to landscape. This shit is called Poppy Gonzalez Landscape and Company, oh, don't, bitch. don't forget about the scammers, friend. Don't forget right. about and then, the scammers. And then, of course, the we, got the sc- <laughs> we got the scammers. You know what I'm saying? But the there, there's a lot, oh, there's a lot of... In- there's a lot of ingenuity out here. There's a lot of ingenuity, I will say. But I will give to growing up here, it took me going to Atlanta and seeing so many black people be entrepreneurs for me to even think about getting out of that employee mentality and working for myself because you don't see it in Miami for black people, but you damn sure see it in Atlanta. And Atlanta will always be special for that reason alone. You know, when I think of Miami, I think of drugs. Is the drug Situation real bad in Miami still. Yeah, well, street money done dried up. Here, it's not like it was back in the yeah. day. Yeah, street it's, money done dried up. It's, I it's, mean, it's scamming, scamming is very popular here. Yeah. What kind of scamming? When y'all say scamming, what does that mean? People know how to buy a car, credit, credit cards. They have, well, they have machines and they'll connect it to the gas station. You will go and try to pay for gas. They can get mm-hmm. all your information, create the credit card, and swipe your account and clean you out. That's what's mm-hmm. going on. And that's yeah. just one of many ways. Trust yeah. me, there's all type of ways that they yeah. got going on. Now, you I'm know, insurance boy. insurance is expensive down here because Florida, but Miami in particular, is the number one city for insurance fraud. Yep. Like, I, I'll tell you a secret. I drive a Honda Civic. My car note is 320 My insurance is 313 a month on a Honda Civic. Wow. It's wow. costing me damn near $700 a month to drive a Honda Civic. They're not playing. Because insurance is so high down here. Because they're selling the cars. Because of, and because of fraud. Because of the insurance fraud. So much fraud is committed here. Yep. Mm. Well, I'm glad. I mean, Atlanta is nice over here. You get a, you get a <laughs> 1.5 million, you good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then, when, you know, you go out, the money is different. Like, you feel... If you could go to my, you could come to Atlanta and live like this. Why the hell would you want to go back to Miami? That's just my thing. no. And, 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 if my loved ones are here, I can do pretty much anything. I used to travel to anywhere before now. Yeah, but I work so, out here. That's why. That's the original reason I came out here is because of love and hip hop Miami, and that was my job. One, you know, I I make sure I have three sources of income coming in. That was one of them. So I'm, I, it was smart to move to Miami where one of my jobs are. And I have to film. I didn't want to come back and forth from Atlanta to Miami because they call you the day before. Oh, you film tomorrow. And I got to hop on the plane. That's what I was going through first. Season. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, no, second season. I'm not doing that. So I just moved here and I, I fell in love. with it. I'm going to tell you what you're paying for, Dr. Heavenly. You're paying for the weather yep. and you're paying for the lifestyle. Yep. That's, that's what you're paying for. But for real, I feel like I live on a resort. I I, I yeah. like the sedimentary lifestyle. I mean, I'm grown, I'm real though. I done did that. But mm-hmm. you know, I'm almost 50. I'd be 50 uh in November. So mm-hmm. I guess different things for different people because I love LA to go visit. Yeah. They you know, I don't fuck, I don't fuck with that LA. <laughs> I like LA it's, a lot. It's so plastic to me because everybody has a thing. Oh, I'm vegan. Oh, I drive a Prius. I'm energy friendly. Oh, I run Runyon Canyon. Like you have to have a thing in LA, and I don't have a thing. So. Everybody got a thing. Okay, LA. Mm-hmm. I like LA just because the sky be blue. But if you go up to them hit, uh, what do you call it, Beverly Hills and the Hidden Hill, the the land is all bumpy. You can't even really have no nice car, and you don't pay six million for this house that you got to ride up these. <laughs> You ain't got no place to park and your their weather is nice. LA, California kicks ass with their weather. Just to be able to let you open your windows and just feel the cool breeze. That I mean, that's cool. Mm, I'm well, good too now. But Atlanta, you do get to see the seasons, but they're not harsh like yeah. it is in New Jersey or somewhere. So, anywho, Shay, I'm finna get in your business now, bitch, because the people don't send me some questions. So, are you dating in Miami? Are you are you dating? Well, if actually, you don't want to answer started. something, say, just don't answer his answer. ass. What'd you say? If you don't want to answer something, don't answer his ass. Just, <laughs> just say none of your well, I'm, I'm, very, I'm, I'm familiar with this one. I'm, <laughs> I'm not worried about it. Um, I actually started speed dating um, this past Tuesday. I saw it, Stacey J. Speed dating was yesterday. It's fun. I never tried okay. it before. 
I started doing it because of my homegirl Juju. She's been doing it for like four or five weeks and she told me to do it. So mm-hmm. I tried it. It's fun. I'm meeting different people. I don't know if I met my my connection, my the mm-hmm. one that I'm supposed to be dating, but I'm doing it for the next four weeks, every Tuesday and Wednesday at seven o'clock, and we'll just see what happens. But it's been some fine ones on there, honey. I'll tell you. As it relates to your television persona and you being so visible and recognizable. Has that helped your dating life or hindered your dating life? I think I allowed it to hinder my dating life. Mm -hmm. And I I put the blame on me. I was so focused on, okay, what's the next gig? What's the next TV show I'm going on? I got to make sure I build my brand and my business. I forgot to spend time with my family. I neglected Mm -hmm. my family. I neglected being happy and having a significant other. I was choosing the wrong men. I wasn't thinking properly. I felt from my connection with God. Like it was, it was, I was so focused on staying relevant in the industry. I lost touch on what's really important to me, which mm-hmm. is family first. And I mm-hmm. want a family. I want to be married. I want kids. I don't have any kids. So that's why I was like, you know what? Let me take a chance on speed dating and see what happens with that. And I've gotten such a good response. I have production companies asking me what I do, a live TV show. I'm like, I don't care. Yeah, that's fine. So we'll okay. see what happens. I really want love. This is not. Hey, let me let me just do this for my fans. I really want to find love. People always yeah. think that I would just date somebody in the industry. No, I'm I don't want to date anybody in the industry. I'm trying yeah. to try something different. That's why I'm doing it this way, live on my page. Okay. So why don't you want to date somebody in the industry? Are they different? I, 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 know I have at, at, for, at first my mindset was let me date somebody in the industry because they kind of understand what I'm doing, because when I tried to date somebody that was looking at the industry, they wanted me to stop my brand, stop my business, become a housewife. They would get jealous when people would come up to me and hug me or want a picture, want an autograph. They didn't understand my lifestyle. So I was like, at that at that time, I'm like, okay, let me just focus on somebody in the industry. But then I started to notice, y'all got too many options. It's too easy for you to thot in these streets. You know, like it's, I was just like, let me, I just wanted to try something different. If, the person I end up with happens to be in the industry, okay. But so far, right now, how is dating different in Miami from it from Atlanta? Because to me, Atlanta, I mean, I know a lot of girls in Atlanta, a lot of women in Atlanta, professional, what have you. They say the pickings ain't nothing in Atlanta. Like you cannot find anyone. Well, that- my problem I had in Atlanta, there's like eight, nine girls to every male there. You More know. Than- and, and I'm like, I don't have, I don't want to compete with anybody. You will have guys there. They have about three, four girlfriends and they'll be taking care of every last one of them and none of them complaining. That's not the lifestyle I want. You know, I want a committed relationship with somebody that's committed to me. So I just, I, and, and honestly, when I'm dating, everybody's not from Miami. I'm talking to people all across the country from Detroit to LA. Like people from everywhere are able to come on my live and speed date with me. You know, I'm going to take it a step further and take it a little deeper. Atlanta, and a part of the reason why Atlanta is so popular, I found out, is that geographically it's the nearest, largest city in between five HBCUs, right? And in America, the bar for black men is set so low that you got a college degree and a decent job due to shit. So you got a lot of black men in Atlanta. They got their little corporate job at Coca-Cola. They got their little corporate job at UPS. And our culture tells them they the shit. So they become womanizers because, bitch, you ought to be happy to be with me. I got my little $90,000 a year job, my bands, and they run around thinking that they can do any and everything that they want to do to these girls. And these women, because there is a shortage of men, and they, they are them. more women, they mm-hmm. let them do it. One thing I realized, to help answer your question, moving back to, my, to Miami, and Shay can, can vouch for this, one thing Atlanta has over Miami is that there is a black middle class scene and an upper upper middle class scene in Atlanta that doesn't exist here. In Miami, you've got to be open to a Latin experience. You can't come down here and be like, I just want to date a black man. you oh, got to no. be open to other because if not, you're going to have a hard time finding somebody. To take I'll tell you this. When I came here, it's so many Spanish guys that try to get at me. And I'm looking at first. I used to look back like, who they looking at? Because I'm coming from Atlanta. I'm not used to that. I'm mm-hmm. used to being around my culture. So mm-hmm. I'm like, wait, they looking at me? And they like, I mean, French men, Spanish men. Like, I'm just looking like I'm just, I was just shocked and surprised. But when I tell you they be fine, and I'm definitely giving them a chance. And you got to look at it like this. You got to look at it like this. They 
grew up around Spanish women all their lives, so they want something different. Different. You know what I'm saying? Just like us, that when we're around ours, sometimes we want something different. So whereas you may not be wanted amongst your own people, you go somewhere else and be the creme de la creme of yep. the dating scene. So I'm winning out here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to find my husband. You're going to make everybody want to move somewhere in Miami. I'm going to find my husband. <laughs> if you're looking for a man, Atlanta is just not the place for it. It's I don't, not- yeah, I don't believe that. Yeah, that was part of the problem. That was a part of the problem. I believe that. But I moved. It's different. I have more options here. I'm speed dating now. So wish me luck. I'll find something. Everybody you know, I, I tried to let them come to me in Atlanta. I'm finding them in Miami. I'm not sitting that way. So, Jay, what's your story? Like, what's your story? I know you say you were born in Hawaii. What's your story? Everybody got a story. What's your story, sis? Um, when I started, when I moved to Atlanta, my whole goal was to just be famous, not knowing what I wanted to do. I've always, my mother said, I've been saying that since I was like seven years old. She got videos of me saying, I'm going to be famous when I get older. I just didn't know if I wanted to sing. So you started out in Hawaii, then you moved to Atlanta? No, I was in, my father was in the army. So I was born in Hawaii. We were there eight years, went to San Francisco, New York, Milwaukee, Atlanta, and now I'm in Miami. So I think because I moved around so, so much, I was, that's how I'm able to adapt in any environment. Um, when I, but when I went to Atlanta, that was my come, that's, that was my come up. That's when I first got on television, but I started off as a flyer girl in the streets, passing out flyers. I was paid to do that. Then I upgraded to an hypnotic girl, put on a hypnotic mm-hmm. t-shirt, passing out. You remember the hypnotic back then? Uh-huh. The early 2000s. Right. Uh-huh. And I was, um, going around to different clubs. I was paid to pass out the hypnotic drinks. Then I was like, I don't want to do this. I said, I want to be a video girl. So then I met Casting by Carolyn. You should know Casting by Carolyn. She was a top casting mm-hmm. in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Um, I started working for her because I didn't like doing videos. I did a couple videos. I was cool. But I started working for her and I started picking the girls for the video. Then after that, I found on Craigslist an application to be on Flavor of Love season two. And that's how I got on there through Craigslist. I was just looking for an apartment at the time. Ran into mm-hmm. the casting under gigs and I got on there, and that was my first time going on television. Now, no, I wasn't trying to fight for play, but I was trying to fight for my position to stay relevant because the longer every episode you're on, the more episodes you're on, the more relevant you are. Mm-hmm. So then that's that's when my TV experience happened. So I went from mm-hmm. Flavor of Love, you know, Charm School, I love mm-hmm. Honey, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, and then Love. Did you like Flavor Flav? Like, was he like, what's the what's the attraction with him? Because I, I mean, I'm just saying from the people outside. Oh, I, I would never talk negative about him. There was never an attraction with me to him. It was more so I was paid to be on the show. I wanted to uh, boost my brand and my name, and my face was my brand at the time. And they I looked like the like women really him. liked him. They looked like the women really liked him, like on the show. I think a lot of people liked his personality. You never knew what Flay was going to say. You know, he was a hilarious individual. He, like, why are these 20 different women on the show fighting for this crazy-looking man? You know, that's basically what, that's what it was. But, that, but, yeah. but you didn't know the producers were backstage telling us, hey, don't worry about Flav. You just need to make sure you get her off the show so you can keep your spot. You know, that's what constantly was told to us all the time. So it wasn't about him, but he was, it was, he was a cool guy. It helped start my reality personality career. And I've been on show after show. It's not a lot of girls from Flavor of Love that's been, on, been able to be on show after show. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, there's none. What about the girl with the long eyelashes? What was her name? Of? Oh, New York. Heidi. Heidi. What New, York? Heidi. Huh? New York. New oh, York. New York. New York has her own. Um, I think she has her own talk show where she kind of sits down at a table and she talks to different people. Mm-hmm. I like that she evolved from what she was. Um, she's. I mean, to me, she's a vet when it comes to reality TV. Let's be clear. But she's evolved from how she used to be to what she is right now. She's still mm-hmm. New York, but she's not as wild. Crazy, and I respect that about her. I respect her hustle. Yeah, you know what? And one thing that Funky that even and I all agree about is you get in the way you can get in, and then you can change your image up later. Because I always talk about Funky that with the hat and the ugly ass lipstick. Talk about my hair is lame. <laughs> shoot, I, I mean, I've had moments in the industry where shoot, my hair was terrible. First season, what Love and Hip Hop Miami, when I had that bun that went viral, everybody was talking about it. Then I came back with a vengeance second season and I started switching my wigs up. It got cuter and cuter. But I was like, I mean, I own up to everything that's happened to me. I don't have any regrets at all. You know, people make fun of me all the time, but at this point, I'm pretty immune to it because it, nothing you can say negative will reflect me because it just, it just don't. Like, I know who I am. 
Let's you talk about that. You become numb to it after a while. What? How do y'all feel? Both of y'all being reality personalities, minding your business, you wake up one day and now you're a meme. Like, what is that like? <laughs> well, that was the first time I was a meme that that went that viral. Uh -huh. I at first, I was like, God damn it. And I blame the hairstylist. You had me go out there with that country ass bun on my head. But after a while, I started just laughing at it. It was Thank everywhere. I got plenty of followers from it. I started uh -huh. to promote my product at the time. I made some money. I really didn't care. I, I, I didn't think care. That I think a lot of times it's taken out of context because when when fucking I need to read my ass, my tail, I'm stopping, stop cussing. The first time when my hair is laid, I was kind of pissed. I was like, fuck that bitch. You know what I mean? And that. But then when I started watching him, I said, oh, this shit is funny. Right. But like, this ain't even about me. In fact, it is never personal. He's, helping me, he's helping me could be talking about me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You more I'm real. But um, the memes. I'm I'm sure I'm a lot older than you. It don't bother me, sis. I got my man. I've been had my man. I mean, oh, some right. of the stuff they say hurts my feelings. But like the memes, I never had a makeup artist before reality TV. I never really got my hair done. I would wear, you know, a smock over my head and just keep going. You know what I mean? And right. I'd be scrubs and a t-shirt like I am now. So that wasn't my life. So when I started, I ain't have no skill in fashion, hair. They talked about me bad, but I had that mouth. But they were talking about you though. That's the only thing. That's that's how I feel. As long as they continue to talk about me, I'm good. Keep talking. Keep my name in your mouth. Because that's something that came up actually this season. Why is Shay on the show? I don't know why she's on the show. She she's not in love. She's not a hip hop artist. You know why? Because y'all can't keep my name out your mouth. That's why I've never went anywhere. On top of that, it's almost like you want me to go in the studio like everybody else on love and hip hop. And then don't and never come out with an album. Never come out with a hit. Like, come on, I ain't doing that. What what um uh, what love and hip hop was Cardi B on? New um, York. New York. Yeah. New York. The only one that I really see doing the damn thing with that part. Yeah. She, yeah, she did good. I think um K Michelle. K Michelle did good. It was a good look for K Michelle. Yeah. K -Michelle or whatever. It was a. So Shay, right. let me. Go ahead. Let me ask you this: Being a vet in the game, you, I, I'm assuming you kind of the one who now introduced your brother to this situation like how did that come about and, and how was this experience going for him um it's pretty hard for him only because he never knew he's he's never experienced so much negativity before right. you know he he didn't know that they would go back and get his ex-girlfriend from 10 years ago and bring her on television and she pour her heart out you know the bitter bitch that got something to say from 10 years ago wants to come on tv now 10 years later to explain what he did to her he didn't expect any of this to happen, and he definitely didn't expect it to affect his current relationship. But it mm -hmm. did, and that's what love and hip hop is about. Um, they expose who you are, they expose your relationships, and they want to see your natural reactions. And what you mm -hmm. got was his natural natural reaction. He's learning, you know. Mm -hmm. what I mean? You never know what will be the status of their relationship because I don't know. I'm, I don't, I don't. I'm not in their business. At, right. Would you pay me to have an opinion? And that's what love and hip hop does. What is your opinion on Amada and MJ? I give you my opinion. We're not filming right. right now, so I don't give a damn. That's their business, and I, I stay out of it. I keep it moving. I'm trying to find a man of my own. I don't got time to worry about somebody else's relationship. But I support whatever decision they make. Okay. That's good. That's good. So no. what are you looking for in a man? Like, if you had to just describe him, what would he be? Yeah, like, when I'm speed dating, I always let people know I love tall men because I'm short, and I like to look up at my man. I like to feel protected. So I would prefer six feet or higher. There's been a couple 5'11 guys in there, which is fine. Um, I want you to be attractive. I want you to have a damn job, a career goal. I would, you have to have that. I don't want nobody coming in trying to leap off me. I had that situation yesterday. A guy came in and said he's a model and actor. As soon as coronavirus, yeah. he back at his mama and daddy house working for the family business. I was like, yeah, I know what you about. Mm -hmm. You want me to come support you and pay for all of everything going on with your acting and modeling career. So, no, I don't want that. I want somebody to bring just as much to the table as I am. I have my own business, honey. You can go to my website, thehealthyhand.com. We're selling detox, belly fat flush. You know, we got black seed oil going on up in here. And it's selling like crazy. So, if I got my money. Do I got any weed? Is weed legal in Miami? No. No, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. But is, is it medicinal? Can you do it medicinal or no? You, you can't do far as I'm concerned. You can't do anything, but it will. Yeah, be. I don't. I'm not sure. But the I people say, I say, 
I take CBD every day. CBD, yeah. You know what? Matter of fact, it's on the way because I shout out to my friend, my neighbor, uh, Sean Credo. He is the CEO of Pineapple Express out in LA, who Debo just was on TMZ for doing the commercials for. He's a CEO of that company and he's actually getting ready to move to Puerto Rico because Florida, he told me, Florida is on its way. Yeah, it is. And people are preparing here. Right. So by, the and time, by the time you get your license to sell, that they can your business going. So exactly. I know a friend that's already preparing. I know somebody else that, that got the grow house. So I'm like, ooh, this is going Heavenly, to is that Heavenly, would you, would you because it is a big money making opportunity, would you be interested in, would you go into that line of business? The CBD? The, the marijuana, when it became legal. Would you invest in that? Absolutely. My husband sells the CBD cards now because it's, it's effective. Okay. I, you know, I, 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 I very rarely put my opinion out about that, but it's got to be better than that hen. It got to be yeah. better than Hennessy. You know what I mean? A lot of people are saying on here, Shay, that I'm being very reserved. And I'm acting like Dr. Jackie. I'm not really talking like I normally talk. That's because I don't know what to expect from you. And I don't want to offend you. And I got a, a habit of offending people. No, I, I, want, I want you to be yourself. I want you to be yourself. You can ask me whatever you want. Like you said, if it's something I don't want to talk about, I just won't talk about it. Yeah, yeah, OK, OK. So you well, the people say the people want to know, is your brother still living in that lady house for free and ain't paying no rent? I don't know. That's something you got to ask. <laughs> I'm just since since that's how we do it again. Funky not need you a goddamn man. Okay. My my vodka kicking in that bitch. Don't worry, Heavenly. I got this. This is what this is what I would say. Yes, they live together as far as who pay what. I'm not over there to figure it out. I pay my own bills over here. I'm not Do he work? Do he work? I don't know what they got going on over there. That's 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 uh -uh. No, because you can work and not have a nine to five. What that is, you true. can have income coming in. I don't have, I don't work a nine to five and I got income coming in. So, all right, now, um, you said I could be myself. Now, I don't know nothing. I just know you're loving hip hop and I don't fight. Shit, I talk a lot of shit, but I ain't trying to fight no damn body because the last time I dealt with loving hip hop was Jocelyn Hernandez and I shut the fuck. I shut the hell up. <laughs> so that's why I'm being reserved. I'm being Jackie. I'm doing a Jackie. Jocelyn said something to Jackie. Jackie said, yes, but I almost died. I had um, breast cancer. Uh, she got that woman right up off of her, so I don't know what you're <laughs> that's what I'm saying. When they say love and hip hop, I'm like, oh shit, I better be quiet because I say too much and I be done said the wrong thing, and then you don't curse me out. Then I have to fly down in the white man with your ass, and it's almost like, oh, that's what we know, ass will be going on. Here, I, I whoop ass, I don't get my ass whooped ever. I know that's, that's right. right, that's what they say. I know that's right. But really, honestly, and I hate to keep going back here. How is Trina? Because I just love her. I don't know her from Adam and I ain't never met her. I don't think I've probably seen her in concert. But how is Trina? Trina, she actually has a beautiful spirit until you piss her off. When you piss her off, you will see a whole nother side. But that's with anybody. If you mm -hmm. piss anybody off, you're going to see a whole nother side to that person. But the, what you know what with Trina... I felt so sorry for her when her mother passed because I've seen the different side of her that I've never seen over the years, of course. You know, it was her mother. You only have one. You will never have another. So, you know, I've seen her break down. I've seen her cry. And I, I've seen emotions come out of her that I've never seen before. And it, it wasn't all exposed on Love and Hip Hop, but I've seen it off the show. You know, I've I seen her out in Atlanta and they had an event for her right after her mother passed and she was receiving an award. She couldn't even focus. She yeah. was so zoned out. She couldn't even focus on what was going on. She had tears running down her face to where I started crying just looking at it. You know what I mean? But she has a beautiful spirit until you piss her off. Everybody tell me they need to contact my husband because they got something. They need the CBD card. You know what I mean? He does a full exam, y'all. He a real doctor. He not playing with y'all, okay? <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. So, Shane, I got a question for you. What 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 shifted in your life that made you go into fitness? Um, oh, that's this is what happened. I was in Atlanta and I had one out. Okay, for number one, my relationship, I didn't have one. My finance, my finances were dead. I didn't have a job. I fell into depression, so I started to eat. I gained over 50 pounds. So oh, I decided wow. to go out and I used to wear you ever heard of um, body magic back in the mm -hmm. day? Everybody was, mm -hmm. I was wearing the body magic up under my clothes to try to hide because I had a lot of cellulite, my stomach was flopped over. I was just really trying to hide what I, you know, what I really looked like. 
But anyway, I went to a club one time and a guy was just taking all these pictures and it ended up on a blog the next day that I was pregnant by Scrappy, me and Erica at the same time. And I'm like, pregnant by Scrappy? Little do people know it broke me down. I was right. crying so, so, so hard. Anyway, Scrappy had introduced me to a trainer, Derek Taylor in Atlanta, Georgia. I went to him. He sat me down and was talking to me and we he was talking too damn much. I'm like, what, what are we talking about? I need to be pumping mm -hmm. some iron right now. I'm trying to lose this weight. I'm depressed. He said, if I don't change your mental state of mind and figure out what's going on with you, there's no way I can get you to change your body. So I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. So once I had my sessions with him, not knowing he's a life coach, I had my ses sessions with him and he basically said, you can change your circumstances. You choose to sit in your sorrow. I'm not about to babysit your feelings. I'm going to teach you how to get up out of that and wake up. And that's exactly what he did. So I started losing weight. And that's how Shay J Fit came about. He's like, you need to create a brand. You look so good. Can you stand on. up for me? Can I see? Well, if you, let me see. I probably have to. I see your breast. You look like a double. Oh, you bigger than me in the breast part. Okay. Oh, no, that's that, my, that's that's my that's that's honey. This my oh, favorite okay. bra. You look good, darling. You look real good. Okay. Thank you. So you so, how long did it take you to lose that weight? Because I gained a little weight over the corona thing. Um, <laughs> everybody did. They go to the refrigerator yeah. every 15 minutes. But um, it took me, I started losing weight after about a month. No, I would say a couple months because I was still going to Popeye's, trying to sneak and go to Popeye's. I know, and then he mm -hmm. called it. He was like, you ain't losing weight fast enough. Something up with you. When I changed my eating habits, I stayed away from bread, sauce, sodas, sugar, gluten. Like, I, I just completely did a 360. That's when I started noticing the weight. Because you can't just go to the gym and expect all of these results. You have to change your eating habits, period. Mm -hmm. So when I started doing that, I started losing weight, posting on social media. And then that's when Shay J Fit came about because everybody wanted me to create a brand. And I started selling belly burners, resistant bands, meal plans, whatever. That came to a stop with fibroids. I never heard of fibroids before ever in my life. But I started, my trainer told us it's not in my stomach. I knew it was there, but I was ignoring it. And I started noticing with my menstrual that my menstrual went from a normal six days to 14 plus days. I was going to the bathroom three, four times an hour. I had pelvic pain in my stomach. I fell out and fainted a couple times because I was losing so much blood. I, I became anemic and my iron was low. So I have a gash right here from falling out. That's when I'm like, okay, it's time to go to the doctor. They did the ultrasound, found out I had fibroids. And that's when I went to the holistic doctor. The holistic doctor gave me herbs which minimized my symptoms. But I waited a year before I went to the doctor, and one of my fibroids was the size of two and a half breakfasts. So because of that, mm -hmm. I decided to have a myomectomy. It, you would have thought it was like a knot. It looked weird. Um, I had a myomectomy. My doctor gave me a choice of a hysterectomy or a myomectomy. I'm like, I don't have kids. Why would I have a hysterectomy? For y'all that don't know, they wanted to take my entire uterus out, which would prevent me from having kids. I said no. I'll have the myomectomy. So they cut me open, removed the tumors. I had four of them. They thought I had one. I come to find out I had four. That big one was hiding the other three behind me. So they removed all of them. And that's how the hand came about. I started selling fibroid tea and pills to help other women. I became a spokesperson for fibroids. I celebrate fibroids every July. Because just like I was aware, there's a lot of women that don't understand. Do you know fibroids? The reason a lot of women have miscarriages is because of fibroids. And women don't even know why. They think it's just heavy. They don't know why their period is just heavy. They don't, they're just unknowledgeable about what's going on with body mm -hmm. So if I tell my story, I know that I'm So on the hand.com, I started selling that tea and pills and detox and black sea oil and things like that. So I didn't want to put it on Love and Hip Hop. Trust me, Stephen, too. They begged me to, but I was so embarrassed and crying about it because. Dr. Emily used to know it's embarrassing when you never know when your menstrual like I would have two periods in a month and out of nowhere it would just come out of me like when it was embarrassing because I had accidents in my car, I had accidents in the bed. I had accident one time when I was in a hotel checking in for a booking and it just came out and ran all down my leg and I just took off to the bathroom downstairs in the hotel and didn't want to come out with like, How old are you? How old are you? Because you done did a lot of stuff. 36. You know, so old. 36. 36. You look beautiful. You know, a black woman, you can't tell. You cannot tell a black woman's age at all. But uh, a lot of people have gone through those fibroids. A lot, a lot of people. So that was. But, but they're unaware that it is fibroids. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. They don't know that it's fibroids. So and that's what the symptoms I have. 
we will be like, hold on, I got the same symptoms she got. Maybe I have five. I need words. to get Let's take mm-hmm. my ass to the doctor and figure out what's going on. And I think that's a good reason why you should tell the story. I don't know what love and hip hop is about because everybody, you know, every time I see it, it's a fight. But I think that people should learn about that so they know, you know what I mean? Oh, maybe that's what I, you know, I know in, in, in married to medicine, we have a lot of drama, but I try to put out something that people can learn something from, you know what I mean? And your story will help so many people, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's how you have to try to look at it. It's, it, it was hard. It was hard at first, but I'm glad I did talk about it on the show and they followed my journey slightly because I've had so many DMs and emails and it's, and I've helped so many. I walked this girl through her entire process of her myomectomy. I talked to her from every time she went to the doctor when she finally had her surgery, after she had her surgery. And it just makes me proud that I can do that because I know the process. I went through it. It's easy that to go, go, that went through what you went through. You know it's more it's more common than not because it, we've seen it on reality tv we've seen cynthia have the surgery we've seen quad go through it and now shay you know, that's three black women in that reality tv sphere that we've seen um they told a story you know what i mean it's probably yeah. been more that just have not told it you know so somebody asked what kind of vodka i was drinking i said smirnoff just oh, some of the 9.99 shit i got from the, the gas station last night child I know that's right. Praise the Lord. But you, mm-hmm. you seem so. So, uh, your background—you moved all around. Look like you just—you a hustler. Like you, you just. I am. Hard, and I respect that. You know. I am, but I'm. I'm the one. If I had a choice to trade everything in for a family, I would. That's how bad I want one. So, want what's your family. ideal family look like? Are you into like, the gender roles? I always ask people this. Do you feel like the man should be the leader, or what? You know, because you know me, and you love here for this shit. He will help me boost my brand and my business bigger than what it is right now. I will support him as well. I, I don't want to just be a housewife at home, cooking, waiting for you to get home, sending the kids to school. That's not what I want. I think I can do all of that and maintain my brand at the same time. And my husband Does he have to make more money than you, Shay? Whether he does or he doesn't, that doesn't that doesn't bother me. Honestly, I wouldn't mind creating a second business with him and we get the money together. But he got to work, right? So, so. He got he has to work. I'm not taking care of no nigga. I'm not. Okay. As as culture, like I don't like I said, I don't care if you African American, Spanish, Arab, Haitian. I don't care what you are. Chinese, Korean. Long as you love me for me and we have that connection that I feel, that's all that matters. That's what I feel. Well, so okay, so okay, so what do you feel about okay, everybody going through it on reality TV? Suppose your man cheated and you're on reality TV, would you take him back? I know you probably don't know because you haven't been in that situation. But well, you- I have. I mean, it, it really depends on the connection I have with him. If I feel like it was never going to be something long-winded anyway, then I would probably let him go. If this is a pattern that I've noticed, if you've done this multiple times, it, it depends on the situation. You so know, I was, in, I was in a relationship and I cheated before, and he was a good man. He was and a really he left, good man. right? I'm assuming he left, right? He left. He, left. He, he couldn't take it. He left, and he, he was probably one of the best men I ever had in my life. So he was the best man I ever know. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, how you get caught since you're supposed to lie to the end? What? How you get caught? Well, I got caught because he wasn't the person I was cheating with was in the public eye, and it came out. Um, and he found out from social media. I'm sorry, it was online. It, it so you supposed to lie? I couldn't lie. There was no lying. His people knew the guys. People they had mutual. Did they friends. have pictures or videos? Um, there was a picture of us. There wasn't no video, but there was a picture of us for sure. Um, it wasn't. A, I tried to get him back. I, I made so many promises, and we honestly, he didn't leave right away. It took about a good three months, but he tried it. He just couldn't. He couldn't get over it. He he get over it. it was always coming up. Do you want to know life. something? You want to know a very funny story? And. I, I was dating a guy when I was younger. He was 20 years older than me, and I cheated on him in our house. I'm telling y'all a piece of my business. This is my last relationship about eight years ago. And he found, you know, when you tear the, the condom open, you that look, that little triangular piece. He found that little triangular piece in the house. And when I came home from work, he had that little triangular piece sitting right on the counter by the toothbrush or whatever. And I was like, I'm caught. But I just picked that little triangular piece up and I threw it in the garbage. And I was young. I ain't know no better. So eventually he asked me about it. And I said, you know what? 
I want this relationship to work and I was taught you supposed to tell the truth. So I'm going to tell the truth in hopes that this will strengthen our relationship and I'll get some cool points for telling the truth. There was an old lady under the tree that told me, you don't never tell no man the truth about cheating. You take that shit to the grave because they'll never get over it. And it was the God honest truth. Yep. And I pride myself on being an honest person. But she, my, my friend Donna Hogan, she's a big time realtor in Atlanta. She told me, you don't never tell no man the truth about your cheating because they'll never get over it. And that's the God, and that's the God honest truth. It's same like Shay. We tried. That man put me through the ringer for the next two to three months. And then eventually it was just like <laughs> You see, the same this thing didn't happen. I thought by being honest and opening up and letting them know it would never happen again. No, you should have called me. And it didn't. <laughs> but, but for my thought process, and I don't know anything about your relationship, if you were dating somebody in the public eye, it looks like to me you didn't care if you got caught. No, I, mean, I care, but the, the guy knew I had a boyfriend. The guy, the, the guy that was in the industry, he but that was, was the one, and we as women, I mean, why you cheat on him? Why? Was, this, this, was when, this is when I first got on Flavor of Love. When I got on Flavor of Love, I was dating somebody at the time. And the guy that I was dating, you know, he taught me everything about starting my business, taught me about photography, because he was a photographer. Um, he, he's the one, when I went to Flav and I gave him a clock on Flavor of Love, he made the clock for me. He said, give this to him when you on there. That'll give you a couple points. He was, he just wanted me to win. He knew I wasn't having a real relationship with Flav. He wanted me to look to win. But when I got a taste of fame, honey, and everybody looks at right. now, it's different now from when it was back then. When I was right. really famous back then, honey, I couldn't go nowhere. Everybody was screaming, going crazy. You would thought I was Chaka Khan's goddamn body. And I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. okay. When I tasted that, that's when my mind got fucked up. I'm sorry, that's yeah. me. Oh, you're my good. mind is completely gone after that. I, I, yeah. I destroyed my whole life thinking I'm... And I'm your crazy. options opened up. Niggas that wasn't available to you before are now available. Yep. Yeah, and but that was a good man. Up. That was a good... That was a really good man. I miss He's a up. good man, Savannah. <laughs> like a lot of those celebrity men, that's how they get messed up because as a young person, see... I, I feel like when, when I'm, I ain't even famous, I don't even feel like, but what I'm saying is as, if you were older you and you went through this, it might not have been so, you know what I mean? I was like, young and dumb and mature. naive. I mean, I, I accept it. I understand there's nothing I could do about it. It was years ago, but I understand why I did it. I, I've never experienced fame before. I've never, like he said, I never had those options before. I was traveling everywhere. I was getting money. I made way more money during Flavor of Love than this love and hip hop. <laughs> That ain't nothing. We didn't have as much competition back then with, with mm -hmm. Flavor of Love. There wasn't as many reality shows out. We weren't mm -hmm. competing with as good as many people. We had the number one reality show on VH1's history. Our numbers was up there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that mean my face was up there. That mean I was recognized more. Now, mm -hmm. I can fight out of mind. That's why you have to do the most to keep yourself relevant. You have to go to Absolutely. the red carpets and the nonprofit events to network. You have to go to the premiere parties. You have to be on blogs. You need to date the right person. Girl, I'm over there. I just want me a hood. Listen to what the sister's saying, y'all. That's where the educational piece come in. If y'all want to be a part of this, we already talked to Carlos King on how to market a show. But once you get it, you do the most with it. You don't sit back and not do that. You better promote something, damn it. But this ain't promised forever. And you want to stay in the limelight where the good and different if you're in this industry. All publicity is good publicity, y'all. I'm just telling you. Look yeah. at your the president. Reality star. I'm just saying it might not be right, but it is right. It's what it is. Yep, that's that's pretty much true. That is that is yeah. so that's that's so, just so who you dating now? Did we talk about that yet? Who you sleeping with now? No, I know I'm I'm celibate right now. I don't I don't have a quarantine bay. I don't I ain't sleeping around with nobody. I play with my toys and that's it. I don't have nobody okay. go my toys. Okay, then there's nothing wrong with playing with your toys versus playing around with somebody that might have corona. No. You're right. Corona is the worst thing we can have right now. Huh? Girl, I'm trying to deal with that. But, you know, and even when it comes to quarantine dating, when I find that one guy that I'm interested in and I want to take it a little further, we're just going to FaceTime until this is over. We're just going to communicate, you know, via phone until this is over. I, I don't want to get in front of you. I don't know where you've been, what you've been touching on, who you've been around. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you one thing about this quarantine as it relates to dating. And I say this to everybody listening, and I've said this to my friends. If you come out of this isolation, the same person that you were when you went in, you a damn fool. Damn. This is going to be the only time in our lifetime that the whole world is standing still at one 
time, there is a universal reason that is larger than this disease, this, this epidemic, for why the whole planet is on a standstill. There is something for all of us to learn and gather. It is a time of introspection. It is a time of spiritual healing. It is a time of getting closer to God. It is a time of getting your mind right. It is time of to fixing wrongs. So when you come out of this, you should, if, you, if you're not 10 times better than what you was when you went in, you should at least be three times better than what you was when we went in. Because you got nothing but time on your hands. Absolutely. Let me tell you, when I tell you my business, I told you my business taking off, so I'm doing orders all day. I started working out online with my trainer. I'm doing yoga tomorrow with my other trainer. I'm speed dating. Oh, I'm keeping myself busy. I'm not sitting in the house watching Netflix all day. Absolutely not. My business has taught me to be a better businesswoman. Because I'm making mistakes, but I'm learning from the mistakes as I'm moving on. You know what I mean? So this quarantine, that's what I'm saying. It's a blessing and a curse at the same time. But it's always ways to hustle, honey. And I'm glad that I have an online business. Because people with online businesses, oh, they're getting that cash right now. And, you know, I hate to say this is one of the flaws that I have, and I have many of them, is I just don't respect somebody that does not hustle. I can't, I just think it's an unfulfilled life. Like, I hate to keep saying it. Like, I don't have respect for certain people because they don't do shit. And I'm like, how you living? What's your purpose in life? Like, dude, what are you doing? Male, female, or whatever. I can't see why you wouldn't take this situation and make better out of you. But I want to piggyback off of what, uh, Funky Daniva just said, sometimes I think you have to go through to get to because I remember the conversation with Dr. Jackie. She didn't want to come back. You know, she didn't have to come back. She didn't want to come back. And I said, Jackie, if you can get through this shit, this here, it's going to open up the doors. Too many people go through this. Yeah. And for you to go through it's you, it's not. I mean, I don't even say that she's telling people it's okay to cheat, but it's okay to make your own decisions Absolutely. and to other people because they're not in your household and they can't make that decision for you. So Absolutely. I, and I, can't nobody hold you at the end of the night like that man. Right. So I just feel like you've gone through so much, Shay, and you, you know what I mean? You got so many hustles. Where do you see yourself in five years, 10 years? Which, what's your end game? With the, first of all, like I said, I rearranged my priorities in my life. So I will have a family. Isn't being messy. They keep saying stop being messy. I don't I guess I'm so messy, people think I'm messy when I'm not. But go ahead. You, being messy. you have an opinion that everybody won't agree with. That's all that it is. And so what? Keep your opinion. It's yours. You're entitled to it. But in five years, I will definitely I've rearranged my priorities, as I stated before. So family is first. I will be married. I pray to God that I will have one or two children. Uh, my my business will be bigger than what it is now because I have my own detox. See, this is another company that I'm selling. This detox right here. Both of these are from a different company. I have my own company that is producing my detox. TheHealthyHand.com has my own detox coming out. And I want my detox in stores, the mom and pop stores. I can, I hope one day it's even in Walmart, honey. You know what I mean? So I have a goal to once my detox come up, comes out to mass produce around the country. That's my goal. I want my family to be happy, successful. I do not want my family to struggle like I did. I will teach my kids how to hustle. I won't give them everything they want, but they will have whatever they need. You know what I mean? So it's just, that's what I'm saying. Things that happen in my life, because when my parents divorced, we didn't have nothing. Our lights was out all the time. We didn't have no water in the house. You know what I'm saying? We had candles. We had to use candles. We, we would boil water on the stove, add it to the cold water in the bathtub. There go our bath. Like, we had to hustle it out. But without knowing that hustle, I wouldn't know how to hustle today if I didn't know how to do it back then. Absolutely. So every, my history and everything I've been through, my trials and tribulations, made me who I am today. Even my mistakes with my relationships. You know, I know that a lot of the, the mistakes were my own, but that's okay. I've learned from them, and now I'm wise enough to know the priorities in my life and what I want. And family first, and my business will be successful because it's already growing. Shay J Fit ain't going nowhere. My fitness brand ain't going nowhere. I would help hundreds of people lose weight. I will be a spokesperson for fibroids. I will let people know the importance of health and wellness because I want to live a long extended life. Don't y'all? I do. Yes, God. <laughs> you, you feel me? And the way we've been eating, all this, to all the toxic foods, the, the, the processed meats, like, no, you, if you have a better understanding on how our foods are processed, you will change your mindset and you probably change with picking your refrigerator. Or and on top of that, just by virtue of being black, the moment we come out the womb, we eating wrong. 
wrong. Because much, of, much of our diet is still a vestige of slavery. Ribs, hog maw, potato oh salad, oxtails, all of, like, and don't get me wrong, we love our Southern culture, we love our food, but it's, it's we come out the womb eating wrong. People yeah. don't even know why we started eating pig feet. My my ancestors, the slaves, didn't have any choice. Ooh, my mouth started water, water when she said the intestine of the pig. They took it and cleaned it out and cooked it. Oh, we're gonna find a way. My people been hustlers. But, but you know what kills me? You know what kills me? Once upon a time, like things like oxtail was the scrap of the goddamn cow. Now it's the highest damn meat in the damn grocery store. Come you know what I'm saying? Hey, that's some shit. Look at it they now. Now, we the shit. now it's the highest damn meat in the damn grocery store. Come on but carry on. Society is transitioning all the time. Yeah. And you have to learn to adapt. Don't be a follower. That's what I always say. Never be a follower. Don't don't ride people's ways. Create your own way. Understand your body. Understand what you put into your body, body daily can cause issues down the line. So to prevent that, Make a change today. It's that simple. That's the, that's the story right there. Make a change today. I love a sister that hustles. Shay, baby, I did, I honestly, I didn't know you. I met you several times, but I didn't know you. I'm telling you, you're going to find a man. Now, I'm going to tell you, some people I know, I'm going to tell you. Like, like I ain't going to say no names because uh, these that's one of fucking that neither friends. Some women, and, and I ain't talking about quad, I'm not. I'm talking about that other girl that you did that video with. I don't know. What she ain't gonna never find a man because her thought process wrong. Don't what think you? about it too hard. I call you later. But okay. if, <laughs> what I'm saying is, you could tell this chick somebody gonna somebody gonna cash in on this one because she, so she got a good mind. I got, I got a question for you, Doctor Heavenly. I think you'll be good because I've had offline conversations with you about money, and you you strike me as a woman who's very good with the money, especially when you was talking about when me and you had the conversation about the cost of the house and the tax deductions. This, that, and the third. We live in a generation now where a lot of young people, their aspirations, they say, when I grow up, I want to be a reality star or, or I want to be a YouTuber. And much like Shay expressed, there's a lot of money in this. What advice would you give a young person, like a young Shay, when she first came in, that was making all this money, don't necessarily know who or what they want to be in life, what financial advice would you give that young 20 something person coming into this? What I would say is, I thought you were going to say, what should they do to get the money? But once they got the money, the rule of 72, the quickest you start saving and putting your money in diversified accounts, they say every six, seven years, that money will double, which is exponential. When you start out with 2000, then you go to 4000, you got 8,000, then you got 16,000, then you got 32,000. So the longer you have, and if you put those big money numbers in, if I had 100 grand, then I had 200 grand, now I got 400 grand, now I got 600 grand, now I got 1.2. So the rule of 72 is starting saving young. Get those tax deferred and tax deductible. That's what people mess up because I, you know, I and everybody always saying I'm being shady. I'm not, but you got to understand taxes. The reason you buy a house is to write off the interest. You don't buy uh, depreciating assets. You ain't gonna save. I mean, it ain't gonna help you. You got to understand the taxes. You got to buy everything that's tax deductible because the taxes is your biggest thing once you get to a certain tax bracket. But I thought you were gonna ask me on how to make money, and Shay got it going on. You ain't got to tell her nothing. It's a hustle. It's not it's easy. Hustle, girl. People make excuses all the time. When I was talking to Melody Show, I mean Melody S. Hope from Love and Marriage Huntsville, she got it. Some people just get it, and it's innate. It's not something that's taught. Shay got it. She got a hustle. Several, you got it, Funky. You you know what I mean? But they yeah, but, 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 but I learned from the school of hard knocks. Y'all know I had a whole fucking three years on the internet of being evicted and broke and on crack. And I grew up in a room with no windows. It ain't no huh? excuse. I grew up in a room with no windows. So it ain't no freaking excuse. You know what no, I'm saying? No, no. What I'm saying is I learned the hard way. You know what I'm saying? I learned the hard way. But when I finally got, when I rebounded financially, that experience was so tough. I was like, bitch, I will die before I ever be in that financial situation again. And I'm blessed to say, bitch, it's, a, it's enough coin put up that'll never happen again. And you, you had to go through it in order to yes. feel that you feel yes. right. You especially when I mean? the money, and Shay, you can relate to this, and Heavenly too, especially in what we do, the money come in so easy sometimes. Sometime. You know what I'm saying? There's sometimes I can wake up 
with zero in my account and by the end of the week i got three bookings a I'm promo on, they want me to mention the ad for uh, mention this product for three grand you know what i'm saying i'll go from zero in my account to thirty thousand dollars by the end of the week cool. you know what i'm saying and so one thing i learned and shay i'm sure you could relate to this when you were young and when you make it that fast you spend it that fast because you always yeah, think it's going to be coming in, in then it's not coming in in my flavor of love days, I had so much money coming in, it was crazy. Come on now, I was getting eight to ten thousand a booking easy, and I was gone four or five times a week. Do the math on that, not including yeah. what I was making online. I was spending yeah. the money like it was gonna be here forever. Guess what? I went broke, my dumb yeah. ass. I went broke, and I wasn't paying attention to what I was spending. And I'm like, wait, where did my money go? And guess who was there to help me? Nobody. So everybody yeah. else was just, here you go, here's a bottle, here's an outfit, here goes some money for your birthday. Just looking out for people, nobody helped me. But and then here's broke. this one. And then when you broke, oh she don't fell off. Oh she don't fell off. Oh, that that so fell off. Got so much to come on now. That fell off. And, and it's so funny because you be trying, even when you broke and you down to your last 500, you be trying to fight that. I don't want them to say I fell off. We don't been there. Mm -hmm. We don't been there. But bitch, when I rebounded, when I finally got my finances back in order, I said, bitch. I'm going to get me a Honda Civic. <laughs> I, I, I got, I got, I got my money. Mobile, but, I, but what I was going to say in the ending is millionaires think in terms of decades. They know this shit don't happen overnight. You know what I mean? and they know it takes time. Now, the quick money comes sometime. But like I say, I wouldn't tell the average person to become a reality TV star because if you look at the numbers, how many reality TV stars are there? We've been lucky. I'm going to say lucky or blessed or, or came from an opportunity. I would tell them to go to school. That's the only sure, sure, sure way to me to make it, make it, become a physician, become an attorney, whatever. Then you come out with your business. So you have something to fall back on. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Find your man in school. Find your man so you can build your stuff together like a minded individual. That's what I would tell the people if I was a certain age. You I, know wish, what I, mean? I, I wish I finished college. I had one more year and I quit. That's when I just said, I just gave up on it. And I, I wish to this day, my brother is a doctor. His name is Dr. Joe Johnson. He started a brand with my, with my other brother. It's called the Johnson Takeover. We go to high schools and colleges and we talk about the misconception on reality personalities. Me, we talk about entertainment, which is my other baby brother because he sings. And we talk about education. And what we try to do is just enlighten you and open your mindset to figure out what direction you want to go in in life. Because nobody gave me that. Nobody set me down and said, okay, Shay, what do you want to do for a living? What do you like to do? What direction do you want to go in? Let me give you a focal point so you don't try to just pick all of it. Because if you notice, if you go to college and you ask somebody, what are you in school for? They're always switching it up all the time because they don't know what they want to do. But if I sit you down and I try to get you to understand what you like, what do you do every day, and go after something that's pertaining to what you like, you, you know, business, accounting, whatever that might be. I was in nursing. What the hell am I nursing for? I don't want to wipe nobody's ass. I don't want to get nobody no shots. That's not nothing I want to do. So I have to figure out what I like. Yes, I like being in entertainment. Yes, I like selling product products. So therefore, I should have went to school for business. I should have mm -hmm. went to school for accounting. That's what I should have did. But no, I learned the wrong way and I made a thousand mistakes. But guess what? I'm here now and I'm learning and I can teach somebody not to make the mistakes mm -hmm. that I did. Yes, God, say it. I love that about you, Shay, and that's real tea. I talk to so many people, and I don't say that I disagree with what they're saying, but Shay, you got it. It's just some people that get it. There's yeah. some people that get it, and you got it. And I see you with beautiful children. I see you with the husband. I see you with the millionaire thing that you raised with your husband, because you got it. Fuck girl, it up. That's that's girl. Awesome. I see you with a Golden Girls kind of family. You know what I'm saying? That's what I want, because you know I'm non-traditional with I the relationships. But we all gonna be rich in our in our Star Island condo. Me and my four Golden Girls roommates, <laughs> with my Josh, with my Bentley, and I love fine ass pool boy. You know that's how my life gonna be structured. But absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So we all gonna get what we want. Last question for you, Shay. Okay. What's the last question, Spunky? That nigga. <laughs> Right. No, so, bitch, let's see. So, um, what's the worst thing you've ever done? What are the what's one thing that you did in your life that you would take back? You know what? When I do and talk about something that we know about. Don't talk no, about no, this is I give the same answer all the time. There's nothing that I would change. If I change anything in the past, where would I be today? So you can't That's ask true. me what is something there's been so many different negative things that has happened. But I wouldn't change none of it because I have to learn from my mistakes. 
those mistakes made me who I am today. So I don't want to transition anything. I don't I don't have any regrets at all. I just learned from it. I'm moving forward and I am a better me today. I am not perfect. I'm still a fool at times. I act up, you know what I mean? But I'm better than I was yesterday. I'm better than I was a month ago, a year ago, 10 years ago. So I'm evolving. So no, I wouldn't change anything. There's no regrets, nothing. So nothing, nobody you ever slept with you said, well, hey, I shouldn't have slept with you. I, I can't remember. I can't take back that his penis was in my vagina. I mean, it, it happened. It is, there's you nothing I can take back. If you could take it back, I can't. I, there's, I wouldn't. Maybe it was it's just. I, I ain't mad. I ain't mad at you. That's a great answer. I, I think the same for me. Um, reality TV. I swear to you, my whole image had you asked me about it ten years ago. I would have said it was some bullshit. I would never do it. You know what I'm saying? Then the opportunity came. That's why you never can judge anybody on anything they do or anything that happens in their life. Because if you're in the same situation, you never know. But now I do look at it as a blessing. My colleagues don't. They say, you know what? It's terrible. You shouldn't do it. Heavily. You didn't have to do this or whatever. But I enjoy it. All the bull switch with cooking that knee man talking junk. I was made for this. Yeah. And they you had know, a went through. Come on, Dr. Because one, one, one of the worst things. Your walk, your path. So they don't know one, what you're talking about. They can't relate. One of the worst things I could have ever got involved with, and I never thought I would have, was just my Lindsay Lohan Paris Hilton phase when I started playing with drugs and alcohol. You know what I'm saying? But I wouldn't regret it because it was that experience and just going through that and coming out of it that just gave me the drive and the hustle that I have. Now, despite the fact that I knew better, I'm from the I'm from the dare to keep kids off drugs generation, the dare yeah. program. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But when I look back, even at that period of my life, I would not take it back because it took me going through that to realize like bitch being on this side of the rainbow is real good Absolutely. and like 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 work this it took me being so low to realize what high was Come on, you know man. what i'm saying and, yeah. and not not high like this but high like this you know right. what i'm saying like <laughs> it did and I, I would not take that experience back i wouldn't I, i'm trying to feel the, like the feeling that you get because like one, one time when i got my third molars extracted right they put me on a drug called mepragan for this since then they're taking it off the market I could see how people get to get addicted because that shit was so good. Uh, funky dining. I was high and I, I could breathe better. I could sleep better and look like I slept so good. I was like, fuck, if I could feel like this every day. Well, you can if you pop that pill. Like it's too good. It's too good. But you can if you pop that pill. You know, you got to understand one thing about it. Well, that, that's just it. You can feel like that every day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're a doctor without getting into it. And I know we're closing. We know that the human brain works off of the reward system. We do things that feel good. We run from things that don't. So the right. more something feels good and releases dopamine and endorphins in your system, the more you gravitate to it. Yeah. And you know, I know a lot of professional people, a lot of really smart people. They all say that LSD got them where they are today. And I'm like, LSD? They were like, wow. yeah, I put that I was able to do this, that, and the other thing. I'm like, I don't need to fuck with no drugs because I think <laughs> I like this is too much. I really do. I really the, psych the, the, the psychedelics were never my drug of choice. I, I never played with drugs that took me out of my mind. But well, know, I, mean, I, I can't relate. The only thing I've ever did, and I was highly addicted to it, was weed. That's it. I've been uh -huh. offered every drug from heroin, sipping on scissor, pills. I've, I've been offered everything. I mean, when you in this industry, that's what people do. A lot of people are the with it. drugs. But me, I've, I've always said no. I'm not, I never even tried it. But we, every day, all day, I was a weed head and I had to stop that because I wasn't focused on what I needed to be focused on, which was my business. How are you going to push your brand when you're looking for the, the drug dealer to give you some weed? You want to roll up all day. Like, uh -uh. Or you out your mind. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Or you, you, to me, that probably would make people lazy, right? I mean, I know too many people. Very call. lazy, girl. Very lazy. I was a bum ass. Like, uh uh. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, yeah, I wouldn't want no weed, but uh, that uh, I never got into the weed because it was low class. To me. You got to roll it and spit on it, and they be passing it and carrying on. Well, Maybe yeah, I think coronavirus. Like this, not like this, okay? I was high <laughs> end. <laughs> I was high end with mine. Nevertheless, don't judge me from my past because I don't stay there no more. Yeah. But <laughs> that's the point. Don't judge because I always think about it. You know, I think something to death, right? If you look at somebody like Lady Sings the Blues, right? Right. Yeah. Well, she making millions of dollars and a bitch tired. 
And the people say, hey, you know what? Take this and you're going to get your money. Your 10 million, just take it this one time. We're going to rest the next time. And then you take that shit and it feel good. And you're yeah. like, oh, I stung and I did the best I ever did in the world. And then somebody will say, well, shoot, I'm tired again. Just one more time. Just this the last time. I'm going to do it one more time. And then you do it again. I could see how people can get addicted. That's why I never really mess with y'all because I could see yeah. I'd be that addictive personality. Because oh, I'm like, I, I got it too. I was just going to say, I have an addictive personality. If I do crack, I'm going to be a crackhead. I, I know I'll be a crackhead. Don't play with it. Like it. I'm a crackhead. Period. You can't tell me that. One drug, had me so high. My husband took it away from me. I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> they took it off the market. I don't know what was wrong with it. But I was like, I see why people do drugs. I can see why they do drugs. But yeah. praise God anyway. So you said you wouldn't change anything in your life. You wouldn't take no, nothing. Man. No penis, nothing. No, no, ma'am. It is what it is. Life, life, life has been presented to me. I, they, I, the card. I'm trying to think of a messy ass question, uh, uh, funky daddy. I'm trying to think of. Okay, so you ever visit the lady pond? I, did I say that right, Funky Danibo? You said it right. You mean have I been with a woman? Is that? Yeah. No, no I've never. I not. I've never, no, it's never. Never. And no. you know, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like eating coochie either. I don't blame her. Praise <laughs> 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 yeah, no, I've never. I've never. And, and of course, I've been approached many times, especially in Atlanta. But no, I don't follow the trend. No, I'm not doing it. I've never been by curious. I just, it's just not my, it's just not Would you get into the, the whole threesome thing? Would you get into that? I've, ne I've never had a threesome. I actually had a breakup because of that. He wanted it so bad and we broke up because of it. We were only together mm -hmm. like a year, but he was constantly wanting that. And then he would say things during sex. Come oh, on, baby, let me, I'm like, no, how many no's do you want to hear? And it just didn't work out. I, I, you, I ever, you ever, you ever, you ever took it up the back door? No, I've, I've never. Some my, my one, the guy, he tried to put his finger up there. And it wouldn't even get past the first line right here. So because that of that, I'm, like, I'm a virgin in the butt. I can't do it. I've never done it like that. Either. I honestly have never been asked to do it like that. I think I would. I asked, but, I, uh -uh. but you might have to give me something. That's a whole that's a whole another level oh, of pain and a whole another level of love. This is something I don't normally talk about. I've never in my life had an orgasm during intercourse. I only can get it if we're playing I'm with you and you're in me or you go down on me. But if you're just, you know, stroking. You know, Dr. Jackie can orgasm. help you with that. Dr. Jackie can help you with that. You can increase your G-spot. You know what I mean? It's your G-spot because if they make it larger, then as soon as you touch it, it's an orgasm. It's just your G-spot is either too far and back. I used to be depressed about it because, you know, I never knew anybody that was like me. But when I met a couple people over the years, and I'm like, okay, I ain't the only person. And I just accepted it. Like, you know. How, how does she fix that heavily? Is it a pill or a It's an injection that increased the size of her G-spot from what my understanding is. But her G-spot is probably somewhere, if, if she did the anal, she might feel it because it's a thin sheet. Is what you know. I talk about Jackie like this all the time, but a lot of women go through that. They don't have, they don't get it during sex, but they'll fake it during sex. And you know, they make people was like that. Candy from um, Housewives, she was like uh -huh. that. She explained it to me, and she said when she was like thirty years old, she met a guy, and for whatever reason, she don't know what he did. She started having them, and she was like, "Eventually, I will." But you know how long I had this conversation with her like ten years ago, and nothing still right. ever happened. Candy, nothing happened. Happened. So it's like, I think it's, it's the size and shape of the penis too. Honestly, like when we get into stuff, because if it's so far back, you need a thinner one that can go further back. Some people prefer bulky. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Your body, and I think everybody's body's a little bit different. But that's oh, I'm open to cool. suggestions because I want it to happen. I've always wanted that feeling, you know, to happen during intercourse. But and I love intercourse. But my favorite part is when somebody go down on me. Well, get the queen bee. It's all that you need to know about down there healthcare. She'll help you. This Dr. Jackie Walker, she on our show, and she could talk to you about it and make it better for you. Cause she. And you know what? That's a whole nother, That's a whole another line of business for Jackie. Just women just going for. Yeah. I need to have an orgasm like that. That's a whole nother stream of income. Like. Yeah, cause I, I come and to find out it's a lot more. She ain't charging nothing, but if she did, it would be worth every day. Yeah. Yeah.
Queen B, baby. But uh, yeah, there's hope for you, uh, Shay. Girl, don't worry about it. Just keep practicing, okay? Thank you for lying. My hair looks so messy. I'm gonna get my hair done because y'all ain't social distancing. <laughs> y'all is not social distancing. My hair. Right, now, look, my nails need to be done. My eyebrows. <laughs> I just threw this wig on myself. My nails. You are know terrible. what? That's what I need to do. Buy some wigs. Cause I, I, don't, I would get it together, girl. Somebody gonna teach me how to do it, and it looked like I would have it together already, but I just, I just don't. So great. Do the glueless wigs, cause this one don't have no glue on it. I just put some body pins so it'll stay, but this don't have no glue or nothing. I just well, baby, you can't film no scene, but you can't film no scene with that one, cause you know the universe gonna reward oh, no, you. No, no, no. That's that girl wig. wig. Anybody, <laughs> knows, every time I do a scene, it is sewn and stitched. Down. That's what I told my friend Nikki. I was like, girl, you've been around me too long for you to be going in front of a bunch of enemies, not stitching your hair now. That's the wig, my yeah. wig off. I never thought about that on Married to Medicine. We really don't have to stitch our wigs down, but shit, after all this so shit. Y'all y'all need face masks on Married to Medicine because y'all throw drinks. <laughs> y'all throw drinks over there. All I know is a bitch that never spit on me. Bit never I know that's right. Spit on me. And I ain't talking about no better, but that's a different level of me whipping your ass. And yeah, I can't. I agree. I agree. That's the most disrespectful thing you can ever do to that's a person. But this is a verbal war. We doing it. Keep your man out of it. We can handle this. But don't and let I'm here to tell you, I have no criminal record. I will beat your ass and take the charge because, bitch, I'm getting out of jail within 24 hours. I'm getting out within 24 hours. I'm getting out within 24 hours. I ain't going to fight or nothing because I'm too old and too professional. But if I did, <laughs> daddy working, I'm going to get out, okay? Right. So it'll be all right. Praise God. So anything else you want to put out there? I want to put how we can get to your website, sweetheart. What's your website? Oh, okay. Uh, make sure you go to thehealthyhand.com. This is a belly fat. The what? The healthy? The, the healthy hand hand. Okay. Um, this is to flush your, your belly out to make your make your stomach flat, basically. Belly fat flush. And then we have a full body detox. Detox your liver, your blood, your lungs. Is that it? Thehealthyhand.com. Did I do it right? Yep. Thehealthyhand.com. Uh -huh. Yes. I'm gonna definitely check out your products. You say they clean you out, this. right? Do not forget this: the black seed oil. Google it, girl. It helps with cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and it boosts your immune system. Get your black seed what oil. What about the sex pill? What's gonna make my sex better? Any of that? I'm sorry, say it again. Sex is it gonna help my sex drive? I'll, I'll let you know if I have an orgasm during sex. I'll let you know. But, so but you know they got a pellet you could get. Jackie put a pellet right here that increases your um your okay. sex drive that makes the orgasms better. Ask Jackie. I'm telling you this shit work because I done did it. Wait, wait, hold on. It's a shot or a pellet? Where do you put the pellet? She just like opens the skin a little bit and places the pellet in and, and stitches it back or just closes it back with a thing and heals over two days. Ooh, that's it's not like that bad. You don't even feel it, girl. She just a little. Where, where does she put the pellet in your vagina? No, 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 on your side of your leg, like your thigh, like your butt. Oh, so it's, so it's like a, a like a hormone or something. It's a hormone pellet, and I think it's oh, hormone or something because it increases your libido. Like you know, I what need I'm to talk to her because you. And, and so that's how you got that extra money. So that's how you got that extra money from daddy to finish that closet. Well, yes, I, <laughs> I mean, I do work, but that may be how I got the Maybach. That's maybe that. Uh, 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 but uh, but uh, he take the pellet too. It's a pellet for me and too. Oh, really? Wow. Okay, Jackie got it going on over there. So Jackie can help you make a baby from nothing. You ain't even got to have no vagina. You can get a baby from her. She can help you deliver the baby. She can help you get a pellet. She got the sex toy. She got the book telling you all about it. I'm telling Jackie, that's why. And I'm going to be messy here, funky, for a second. Me and the other girl, it ain't got nothing to do with our friendship. It ain't got nothing to do with our friendship. That's all I'm going to say. The baby done took this thing and ran with it, funky. She ran with it. And we had the same opportunities. Yeah, but your hustle probably different. Come on now. The hustle is different. Her hustle is different. So that's what that is. But Shay, we got you, your healthy hand.com. You are a beautiful woman. I am so glad I met you. I got your phone number, girl. When I come down to Miami, I'm a, I want uh, you to I want to meet Trina. Okay. I want to the uh, ribs at uh Trick Daddy restaurant. Yeah, Trick Daddy. Go we can go there. We and go Dr. Heavenly, when we get off the line, because Shay, I'm, 
Shay, your number the same from years ago or it don't change? No, it's changed. It's a Miami. You got a 305 number. Send me her number. I yeah, mean, and, it, we, and when the world open back up, we'll go get something to eat. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Thank you thank so you. much. I I thank you. Thank y'all. Y'all so much. All right, y'all. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye. Bye, bye, y'all. Bye, Heavenly. Bye, Sugar Bop. Listen, yeah, listen, guys. I know y'all still here. It's, it's 1900. It's a lot of people here. Yesterday, I signed off by mistake. I meant to kick them out the studio, and I ended up ending the broadcast. So I apologize for that. Now, I didn't give y'all a chance, uh, David Beam, if you could bring back up the link, because I want to talk to you guys one on one. And I know we've been on this a long time, two hours, but I want to talk to you guys about what has transpired or maybe I should leave it for tomorrow. But tomorrow I'm going to come on at 12. But I was so excited to get Tammy Roman that uh, she can't get in. And, you know, that's my girl. So she her schedule is really, really busy. She couldn't get in until three o'clock our time. You know what I mean? She in L.A. So I'm going to come on at 12 tomorrow, but I'm going to come back at three with Tammy Roman. That's our guest for tomorrow. We're going to have a good time. OK. All right. So we're going to talk about it. Y'all got any questions for me right, right away or y'all want to log in? I'm going to give y'all a few minutes because I, I had signed off uh, real quick yesterday, but actually it was a mistake. I meant to sign them off and then talk to you guys like we always do again. I appreciate you guys. I thank you. Y'all got me through this thing. Y'all get me through this thing. I know I'm not going to be able to do this every day, but I surely enjoy it. So when I decide to do it once a week, I'm going to continue it going, though. I'm going to probably have it once a week and then maybe bring on. Y'all give me y'all ideas. Maybe bring on two or three people at one day and just spend less time with them. You know what I mean? Uh, Virgin Burt, Bur the person that's in here now with virgin vegetables, I guess it is. I need to see your face before I bring you in. I'm not going to bring anybody in and I can't see their face, okay? Teresa, all the rest of y'all, if I can't see your face, I'm not letting you in. I know you logged off, but why y'all want to show y'all face? I need to see all your face, boo. Why you don't want to show your face? All right, I'm going to bring in the people that I can see. Hi! Why y'all want to show y'all face? Turn your finger, turn your finger, because it's an echo. No, I can't hear you turn the volume. I can't. Can you hear me now? Yes. Turn the finger. Turn the finger because it's an echo. Are, am I okay now? Yes. No, I can't hear you turn the volume. I can't. Oh, okay. I think that's okay. Okay, Dr. Heavenly, I really enjoy you on the show. Are, am I okay now? And I think Alora is an awesome young lady. And I think she has a wonderful future ahead of her. I enjoy you on the show. And I just, I, I just wanted to say I, I really enjoy you, and I think you're so funny. And I don't know why people think you're mean. I'm not mean. I'm not mean. But when retaliate after them coming at me several times, I do. I, you know, everybody's different. Like they said, there's 16 different personalities like that. There are probably more than that. Yeah. Some people, me, some people love me and think I'm the greatest thing in the world. Some people hate me, but I think that everybody can get 20 percent. You can get 30 percent. You do it. Probably more than that. Yeah. Okay. And I think you and Dr. Damon are absolutely, you guys compliment each other so much. There's such an echo there, and I don't know what's causing it. Is your, is your volume? Okay. Up? I'm, thank, you, Dr. Damon are, you thank you so much, Shirley. You just woke up. Hey, Kiki. Hi, Dr. Heavenly. I don't know why she How got on here and didn't tell you she'd be sleeping with other people, man. Hey, listen, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't know that lady like that. So I don't want to talk about that. You got anything positive to say about Shay? Because <laughs> she's a beautiful woman. Listen, and key, low key, everybody done slept with somebody. I don't, they, you just know her shit. You done slept with somebody. <laughs> now, don't do this, honey. We've all done it, honey. You don't know who I slept with because I'm older than Shay. If you did and I was on reality TV, you probably know something about it. So who you sleeping with, Kay? That's what we want to know. Nobody, I'm saying to myself, is the coronavirus out here? Right, but you can't get it in. You do no. it. <laughs> you can't get it in. You're beautiful. I like your head. Is that one of the Toya Wright um head things? Yes, yes. It's this great is. that I recognize that, and it's great that I see her product out. That is awesome. Yeah, this is before bad heads. I ordered the scarf, and I ordered one for my daughter too. Oh, that is so nice. Where you live at? New York. 
New York. I love New York. Isn't it wonderful? We in Atlanta and it looks good. Now I'm seeing you, big bank, but I can't see you. And I'm, you know, when I can't see the person, I don't let them in. We're all right, push- but all right, Dr. Heavenly. All right, I'm thank you, darling. I appreciate you. What? You are disappointed with me today. I need to talk with Dr. Damon about my condition. Girl, bye. Y'all know how to get in contact. Don't come at me about no disappointment. See, you started this whole sentence off wrong, A. Thomas. Don't come at you disappointed. I'm disappointed in your ass that you don't know no other damn doctor than Dr. Damon. Y'all don't go get, y'all don't go get cursed out by that. You know, if you got a freaking condition, Google that shit and fix it. Don't talk to me about no damn condition you got. I don't want that. Okay? Don't talk about you disappointing me because you got a condition. Leave me alone. I'm going to block whoever that is. Block them. Hey, Queen B, bitch, period. You're so wonderful. I'm going to take a couple of questions if I can, okay? I'm going to take a couple of questions if I can. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to bring people in, but I need to see their face because um, when you see their face, you can't even really do that. Okay, Kid E, I've been with my man since we were 17. We're 27 now, that's 10 years, and I have two kids, but we're still not married. You should have moved on before you had them damn kids, uh, Kia. Now, um, some men are just not the marrying type, you know what I mean? And that's something you're gonna have to deal with or you can't. If you really wanna be married, I don't think he's gonna marry you. I don't think he's gonna marry you. Ten years, two kids. If he has not married you by now, he's not gonna marry you. Um, so you have to determine whether you want to live a life not being married. And if you can't do that, move on. But if you can, you can. Okay. All right. So I'll see y'all later. I'm gonna sign out here. I don't know why these crazy people are coming in the thing. I'm actually scared to bring anybody else in. And um, y'all always messing up something. See, y'all don't even be feeling right doing nothing with people when y'all do that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? I don't like that. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Um, David Beam, I see you here. Are you trying to come in? Are you trying to come in, baby? Yeah, um, I'm looking at bringing different people in. I've, I've asked a lot of people to come. Either it's a conflict schedule or something. But anyway... All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and sign out, beautiful ladies and gentlemen. All right, Tracy. Hey, Tracy, you got a question or comment? Yeah, when do the show come back on? Our show, we don't know. We've Everything's been pushed back because of the uh, CV thing, you know what I mean? So we were supposed to start filming in May. They're now saying June or July, so we don't know. Everything's kind of in hold to see where the world is, so we don't know. Oh, uh, okay. But I, Mary, um, LA actually premieres Sunday. Oh, it did? Or it will this Sunday coming. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, darling. <laughs> bye, bye. Bye, babies. Hey, sugar, you got a question? No, I just wanted to say I look at you every day, and I um I appreciate all the valuable information you give and your inspiration. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Vincent. Hey, Vincent, how you doing? Everything good? Where you at? Where, huh? where you in? Me, I'm in Macon, not far from you, oh, actually. Oh, <laughs> that, okay. That's like, what, about an hour and a half away? Okay, I appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. Let your friends know to like, share, share and subscribe, okay? I sure will. All right. I'm going to learn. I'm, I'm going to have to see people face before I let them do anything. Hey, sugar, I saw hey. you waiting before, but I couldn't let four people yeah. in because we'd have been over talking. How you doing? I'm good. How are you, Dr. Heavenly? I'm good. I I wanted to speak with uh, Funky Dineva, too. Just let him know that I really love him. So I'm a funky bunch, funky bunch boopy. <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad that you brought Shay on. It really changed my outlook on her. I thought that she was a reality show jumper, like she was on all the reality shows. But now I see that she really has her hustle and she's on the grind. So I really appreciate that. Also, I wanted to talk about or expand on what was already talked about, about the thing thing. Um, I had to go on base on yesterday and to see the service men and women with the mask on uh, everywhere that I went on base, everybody had on the mask. It was just so surreal. Um, the base was pretty much empty but all the servicemen and women had on the mask and we have to wear a mask too 
when we go into those buildings. So whenever this thing thing is over, come out better on the other side. And I'm just so thankful to you for your entertainment that we've had over these, what, 39 days? Absolutely. So I really appreciate you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Dr. Kevin. Cool. I appreciate you guys. All right, guys, I got to go cook for my man. So I'm going to clone and log off, okay? I'm going to end the broadcast. I'll see y'all later.